I'm going early, I'm going early. A happy Friday. Hello everybody. I went a little early today. Whoa, that's uh, that's a first. Happy Friday to everybody. Happy lockdown Friday. We're going to be in curfew again. Now I just see in the comments here, no nastiness in the comments please. I want to keep everything lovely and I don't want to, well we, we will probably talk about bits and pieces. I have got, how are you all? So we have Rena in and Ben's in and Paul. Hi, Rena. Hi, Ben. Hi, Sally. Michelle is over here. She's. Hi, everybody. Jimmy Max in. Jimmy Max in. And Yo Yo Max is in. Tammy, how are you? So, hello, everybody. No pop quiz tonight. We can't do that on YouTube, but we might do that um, in the next few days on Facebook. Seems I've got my got my data back. Got my phone back. Uh, had a little bit of a little bit of an argument with um, the people at uh, Turkcell, but they were you know they weren't overly aggressive. It wasn't too bad, but they were going to try and charge me again for a SIM card, and then charge me again for my data. So um, hello, Stuart. So uh, yeah, that's a. I've just got to uh, adjust. Excuse me, I'm going to do something a bit strange and step out of the shop because my my. I tightened up my little stand and now I can't bend it at all. So let's just get that so I can twist it a little bit in Not case I need to. So How are you all, you beautiful people? Mirza Mohammed Usman says hello. Hello, Mirza. Mirza? No, Mirza. Oh, Mirza, how are you? And Paul says, uh, Turkcell sounds like the typical cell phone company in the States. Oh, talk about the telco companies in Australia. Gosh, I said to somebody the other day, I think Accumacy, I spent about 365 years on phone call music listening to Telstra and arguing with those people. Um, there was a time, wasn't there? Hello, Phil, how are you, mate? Uh, there was a time it was the bed, when... It was Ben that I said to, was it? There was a time when um, te telecom companies were there to serve. Now they're just there to pester us and, and put us on hold music. <laughs> I ha You might wonder what I'm munching on. I've got some beautiful Turkish um, pistachios or pistache. Yeah. Can't really tip them up, can I? Just yeah. show, show them. You can see them, they're good. They're good. So, Sheba Farhat says, hello, my son is also stuck in Istanbul. Beautiful. Well, it is a good place to be stuck. I'm sure he's, he's, uh, he's in safe hands. 1888MAO says, hello. 1888, great name. <laughs> you used to have a friend called 1888 back in 1764. <laughs> now, um, Mer I... Sorry, Mirza says, I revisited Turkey in 2018 and these streets are quite familiar to me. Yeah, it, I can imagine. Um, Oh, these make my mouth water. Look at that beautiful colour. Look at the colour of pistachios. These are from Antip. Uh, they're they're a, a Turkish pistachio. Um, they're most delicious. And to my dear friend Paul, who bought me another beer the other day. Paul, I am going to have a beer. We may not be in at the moment, but it doesn't matter. No, Chin says prefer cashews. Yes, Paul's in. Was Paul in? I didn't yeah, see, yeah, see he Paul's... Paul's in. He was the one who was saying about the uh, cell phone companies being the uh, same in the States. Telcos, we call them in Australia. Absolutely. Ben's asking, where's your drink? Where's my drink? Paul says, cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers to everybody. And Yo, oh, and, and Yo, Yo says, hello, Steve and Michelle. Technically as well, Rena. Um, you, we, we got, did we thank Rena before? No, no. We got to thank, thank Rena for sending me a... a, a PayPal gift. PayPal gift. Also, thank you very much. Uh, that's really sweet of you. And Michelle will use that uh, to great food effect, I'm sure. Uh, <clears throat> the lockdown is starting to, it's starting to come up. Cheers, everybody. Good health. You have a little drink there. So Mio says, Bello, Steve and Michelle, you beautiful people. Thank you, Mia. <laughs> Bello, Mia. Uh, Stuart says, the BBC reported that they are containing things well in Istanbul. Um, I think they're doing not bad. Uh, it's hard to say because Istanbul itself or Turkey itself has got quite high numbers, I think, globally. Um, our, we were saying recently that our our area here, let me just turn that uh, light down. I'm not, I thought I, I went early, but I'm not actually prepared, am I? Um, mm. So our uh, little suburb that we're in is one of the hardest hit in, in um, 
Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul as a, as a city is the hardest hit in Turkey. And uh, I've yet to find anybody on the street that knows anybody that's been affected by it. So, you know, I talk constantly, you'll see me talking to locals and neighbors and, and nobody seems to um, know anybody that's been affected by it. So, you know. The Thailand thought says Chang rules. Chang Chang. <laughs> no man, this is this is nice, Phil. This is a very nice, this is a good uh Turkish beer. I had a an, another Istanbul beer in the last show, which I, I can't remember the name of. It's my friend's, my neighbor's favorite beer. Uh Sirkan, he he loves it. So it's it's also a, a very good beer. Not a big drinker. <laughs> not a big drinker as I keep saying you just it, save them for your live shows I you? do save them for my live shows but um, it's it's always fun uh, to, to have a drink and sort of uh, what's the YouTube bug Ben? Oh, someone was just repeating the messages and oh yeah sorting it out. there is yeah. I'll let you I'll let you guys <laughs> sort that out so yes our suburb very heavily hit but to be honest I mean, today we've had a wedding party on the street and there was about 30 people in the same house. So um, things are already starting to get back to normal. It's uh, it's we were really hoping this weekend was going to be curfew free and we were going to get the market opening up the, the fresh uh, veg market. But it's um, it's not. So we might have to wait till next weekend. We made a video today uh, going around the streets. Uh, doing our thing, prepping for uh, prepping for the weekend. I'm editing it at the moment. It's a huge video. It's going to be at least 30 minutes long by the looks of it. Uh, that's for tomorrow. And we'll keep up this this sort of sh grueling schedule if we can. But, uh, you know, forgive me if, if we eventually give up. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. We are, we are lightweights after all, aren't we, Michelle? No, we're going to keep going for a little bit We're longer. going to keep going for a little bit longer. Rina says, cheers, and the pistachio looks so good. Beautiful colour. Pistachios, and I've got, um, Ta Tammy, I've got those lovely figs as well that we talked about the, the first live stream or one of the earlier live streams. So I've got these lovely plump figs, which are also um, these lovely leathery plump figs, which are also from the same nut shop. And um, they are absolutely delicious. I won't, well, I you remember, Tammy? Mmm, like a fig jam inside there. You show inside the nut shop, don't you, today in the, the vlog? Mm, I, I, today's vlog, I go into the nut shop. So, um, Rena says the beard is growing in, lol. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, don't remind me about Rena. It's itching like crazy. I'm not a great beard grower. Uh, and Ben says, our cafe is allowed to let you sit inside yet, Steve? Mm, no, Ben, but some of them do. Yes, but Monday, Monday. Um, some of them do. <laughs> Yeah, you can almost taste them. I can taste them, and they're they're so delicious. Um, Merza says, "Are you planning to go back to your country, or will or will you be staying here?" Well, for the time being, we're staying here. Um, we want to explore a bit, but we might we might be thrown out. Who knows? <laughs> uh, we don't know. Hundred, it's it's really unclear at the moment what the rules and regulations are going to be about. Foreigners that have overstayed. We don't know for sure whether they might turf us out of the country as soon as they open the borders up, or whether they might have some sort of lenience. We're banking on the fact they'll have some lenience. But then you've got to decide will that lenience be three days, three weeks, three months? Probably not three months, but you know. We'll work it out. Don't don't you worry about it. We we will work it out. So uh, Ben says, uh, keep going with the daily vlogs. I am now even less prepared than normal. I'm. I think my uh, my camera looks a little oh. smoky. It's That's better. Good. Yes. Just giving you a bit of a clean there. So I've give, given you a little clean so you can see me better. It was it was a little a little smoky, a little uh, uh, dirty. So that's clearer. So Lulan says, good evening to you both. Baking hot in Devon. We can meet in family groups of six on Monday. Right. And on Monday, we a lot of the... Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much because tomorrow's vlog is going to tell you a lot more. Today's vlog is going to tell you a little bit more about what's happening on the um, 
on the social distancing and, and what have you. Um, I'm hoping, uh, hopefully, so I won't go over that in too much detail. Um, I do need to, while I remember, and you said Paul was in, didn't you? Yes. So we're going to have a little talk about herbs, Paul. Thank you very much for your, your uh, Super Chat question uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, Paul said uh, there is a sh becoming a shortage of fresh and dried herbs in many of the shops or fresh herbs. He, hard, harder and harder to buy fresh herbs in the shops. I think he wants to make a guacamole, which generally you're going to be using cilantro or what we call um, coriander, the, the leaves. They look a little bit, the leaves look a little bit like flat leaf parsley. And, um, you know, you've got some good answers as well, to be honest, Paul, the, 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 the crew here, they, they answered your questions pretty well. Um, and I, I understand where you're coming from, that I can see there would be a lot of shortage. So what do you do if you want to substitute dried herbs with fresh herbs? You, you mostly can do that. And actually with dried herbs, there, there's often a more intense flavor in dried herbs. I think the ratio is something like about three times uh, the intensity. So if you say, for example, a teaspoon of dry herbs would equal, equal uh, about a, maybe a tablespoon or three, ta it's, 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 it's a tablespoon of fresh herbs to a teaspoon of dry herbs. A tablespoon of dressed, yeah, so three times, because yes. it's three teaspoons yes. to a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's only if you, you dice those herbs down pretty fine. You can't just sort of put a few leaves, uh, leaves on there. That would be diced fresh herbs. Some herbs lend themselves far better to drying than other herbs. I mean, things like um, thyme and um, uh, basil, uh, not basil, sorry, um, uh, rosemary. rosemary. These, these sort of, these herbs, oregano, they dry very well. Your softer leaved herbs, like your parsley, your flat leaf parsley and your coriander uh, or cilantro, they really go nice, uh, full and, you know, wholesome into a salad, like a, something that's going to be served cold, um, like a salad. So effectively, you really do want fresh herbs if you're going to be putting them into a guacamole. Do you need cilantro in a guacamole? Not completely. You don't really. And could you use dried? I would use dried. Michelle and I actually make a guacamole. Uh, where did we have it first? I Mexico. think in Mexico. In Mexico, well, there you go. In the home of guacamole, we had a chunky uh, guacamole, and they'd used a very close to ripe um, uh, mango. They sliced and, and diced little cubed uh, mango slices in the guacamole, and it was one of the most delicious um guacamole's we had had now granted that actually did have fresh cilantro in as well but you can experiment what i'm trying to say is you can experiment a guacamole is a is is almost in itself from region to region throughout mexico changes when we were in mexico we we had so many different varieties of guacamole it was it's unbelievable some with a lot more chili in some with almost no chili in at all some were very heavy on cilantro some people use flat leaf parsley there is another thing, uh, Paul, in Australia, and I don't know if this is all over the world, but if we've got it in Australia, you've probably got it where you are as well. My daughter went some years ago up in Queensland to uh, with her school. There is a, a, a farm up there that grows fresh herb and puts them into sort of like tooth choke, tooth, toothpaste tubes, like tubes of herbs. They got a method of putting fresh wet herbs um, into packaging now that works really well a lot of supermarkets sell that sort of stuff you can even buy it i believe on on amazon and, and the likes um, but you could always look out for that personally i wouldn't probably go with a dried uh, cilantro in uh, a guacamole um, it, I, i'd rather leave it out uh, the other option i think one or two people said is to grow herbs and they do grow reasonably quickly some herbs but to get enough cilantro um depending where you live parts of the world it, it's cilantro can be quite hard to grow it, particularly up in queensland it bolts really quickly because of the sunlight so you you want that sort of very temperate climate um to be able to grow it uh 
Were there questions coming in? Is there... Yes, well, not regarding what you're talking about, but having a little conversation about snow. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. I, I wanted to answer that for Paul. We've gone a little technical into the into the, the, the cooking side. It can be a personal preference. Certainly if you're preparing salads or cold dishes to serve, fresh herbs are almost always the way to go. But to be honest, the, the, the dried herbs work well. They, they can go stale quite quickly. So keeping them sometimes, you know, in a sealed packet in a freezer works quite well to keep those dried herbs a little bit fresher. Um, so I hope that sort of answers your question, Paul. I hope that sort of answers your question. Mm -hmm. So what's going on in the comments there, Michelle? I um, see lots of people yes, well, talking. Well, well, Sally, I'm going right back now. So Sally says hi. Um, Hello, Sally. Hi, Piper. I just saw Piper drop in as well. Okay. Uh, Yo Yo says, um, well, so I admire your go with the flow abilities that this makes you both great travelers. Um, yes, or, or stay stillers <laughs> as we are at the moment. Um, yeah, we don't we, we don't let things rock our boat too too much. And then going back to the visas, uh, Merza says, so how are you guys doing with your visa extension? Um, we are not addressing the visa extension at the moment. Most people we've spoken to are, um, are saying that the information is just not clear. Uh, it's definitely clear that you can stay longer than your visa and you won't get into trouble for it. That's for sure. Um, but there, there are a few options open to us. Uh, we, 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 we just maybe in the next couple of weeks, it will become a little clearer. At the moment, it's not entirely clear. Um, Alu Jinu says hello. Alu Jinu. Yeah. Um, Yo Yo says. I'm not. I'm not seeing the text. So if Michelle's saying it all completely wrong, <laughs> yeah, and I'm just it's parroting my, it's it. It's miles up. Um, Yo Yo said we broke two records this month in my town. Highest snowfall amount in 90 years. 16 wow. centimeters in one storm in the Beautiful. middle of May. Then the hottest day on record for May 27th, 32 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well. That's late snow. That that's yeah. late snow, and that that'll often ha happen where, where where you get these sort of bizarre. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure where you are exactly, uh, Tammy, but um, you know, northeastern I... Ontario, Canada. Okay, so <laughs> so so, so we're always going to have those those highs. I I I I, I've, I don't know what to say. Congratulations. <laughs> Jones says, Hi. Congratulations if you like the snow. Commiserations if you like if you if you if you if you well, they don't. Got both, didn't they? They have a snow in May and then the hot in May. Best of May. best of both, both worlds. worlds. That, <laughs> but then you end up with sort of like uh, inches of slush in the roads. I'm sure you get that um, also as the snow melts. Get all that sort of grey slush. So um, Jasper Jones says hi. Hi Jasper Jones. Uh, Quattro Girl says good day from Sydney. Good day Quattro Girl, how are you? Um, Eddie Schrimmer says hey Steve, hope your day is nice. I've got severe storms around me here in Vermont, USA. Uh, well, keep keep the, the, the hatches battened down. Eddie, was it? Um, yes, Eddie. Piper says hi. You just already said hi to Piper and then she said another another lockdown. Another yes. lockdown. <laughs> we, we've, we've been out shopping today. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to get some strawberries. Actually, I want to. I've got a nice plate of strawberries there. I'll just catch up with the comments. Dallas um, Nate Natuai says hi. Um, I just saw Chris someone say, um, Merza said, Have I tried the pickle juice? Not yet. Um, there's a great big, well, great big, there's a great picklings uh, vegetable scene here in Istanbul, probably across Turkey. And um, lots of sort of sauerkraut type equivalents, but they're not sauerkrauts. They're pickled almost anything. They're pickled from mushrooms to to uh, artichokes to. There's just these shops um, not far from us. There's some shops. They're all closed. They're, they were starting to open up today, though. So, and I've actually filmed it in the vlog today, so you'll see that as I pass past one of the pickling shops. Um, strawberries and strawberries. Fresh strawberries. They're in season. Oh, they're smelling good. They're smelling good. So, um, so with these pickles, with these pickled vegetables, it's very popular to have the pickling juice as a drink. It's a sort of digestive here. Very famous in Istanbul. Um, no, I haven't had a chance to try it. Yes, I will be trying it for sure. Michelle has just served me up my favorite honey. Um, and got some just a small bowl of strawberries and some yogurt yogurt 
I don't even know whether we say yoga or yoga anymore. I think I've, I've, I've kind of, um, like I've said, I, I lose track. Now, I love the, uh, sorry, I, I, I lose track of what I'm saying as well. I lose track of how I pronounce things. I'm never sure. Data, data, yogurt, yogurt, tomatoes, tomatoes. Um, this is how the yogurt or yogurt tends to come here. Oh, I've got to watch. Away. You can see that crusty, almost like a. Maybe we'll show you just, just tip get some of that. that way way off the top. I'll show you. It, it looks like um, almost like a clotted cream. I'm getting it all over the place. Uh, on top of the yogurt, like a crust that forms on top of it, and um, it's more it's delicious. It. <laughs> Shall I get back on the comments shortly? I will. So let me see if I can get the colour about right. Can you see that there? See that crust that forms? I don't know if you have that like this. This is very common here in uh, in Turkey, in Istanbul. And I love that. I mean, I would take that crust right off, but it would be unfair. So when I, when you cut through it with a knife, it actually it actually feels like you're cutting through leather almost. And then underneath you've got not Greek yogurt, you've got Turkish yogurt, lovely, thick, almost double cream consistency, Turkish yogurt that, that I'm just going to, I'm just going to pop on top of my strawberries. Stuart says, ah, cat sick. <laughs> cat sick? <laughs> See, Yo-Yo said, I would throw yogurt out if I had it crossed here. <laughs> I know, and, and here they, even the little pots of, of, of yogurt have uh, yogurt have um, this lovely crust, but it's creamy. Look, look here. I mean, if I can get a little bit of it, I don't think it shows very well on these little uh, webcams. It's, it's almost like cat sick. <laughs> it's not, it's delicious. It is so, so good. So now I've got well, Mercer said you should put um, sugar on your strawberries. No, no, I'm not going to put sugar on my strawberries because I don't want, uh, you know, if I've got nature's sugar here, nature's sugar, that would just, for me, that would just spoil it. Sorry, I know, I know what you're saying, and I've done that before, a little bit of sugar on the strawberries, it's always a good thing. But if I can take natural, natural honeycomb, and if I just get into that honeycomb, take the wax as well, Never, ever, ever be afraid to eat the wax from the honeycomb. Actually, my neighbor here, Margie, just over the road, she came with me today and bought some honeycomb. She said it was delicious. Sorry, I can't show you, but I will show you it in a moment. So I'm going to put a fair amount of honeycomb on top of my strawberries, and this is gonna lift the sweetness of both the yogurt, yogurt, and, now I'd probably go for even more than I'm doing. I'm just gonna put three big blocks. <laughs> on there and then a spoon because the spoon you've got to clean that spoon mm. like a like a child lolly oh, that's so good <laughs> it's the get away she stole me spoon that's really rude now i'm gonna have a quick slurp just to clean the palette and then you so you can see now and I'll bring that in close so I've got this beautiful honeycomb dribbling over the thick Turkish yogurt yogurt and what I do I normally have more honey than that because what I like to do is, is go into that honeycomb break a piece so break a piece off you you can't go for the whole piece it, it'd be too sweet and then you get a little bit of of a strawberry so you've got your honeycomb your yogurt whoops and your strawberry and no mouthful should be without the combination of three <laughs> While you're eating there, I'll answer, oh, Ben's answer, 11.53 is here in Istanbul. Paul had a question, mm, that's just, that's way so back good. there. That honeycomb is like chocolate. He's not listening to me. <laughs> it's like chocolate. Because you've got that waxy, that little, those little hexagons of wax in there as well, it just melts. 
The wax actually doesn't melt. <laughs> if you keep it in your mouth, it turns into a piece of candle. But so I've got honey and honeycomb. Nice. Mm. The Paul asks, is there a pub scene there? I know if they exist, they've been closed. But I was wondering if drinking establishments are popular or people mostly drink at home. No, it's very, very popular. This is a, this is an eating out place. This is a drinking out, eating out. There's a huge outdoor bar scene, cafes, eateries. It's huge. What was that uh, Tammy said? Oh, she said, if I was trapped in an apartment with my husband for this long, I'm not sure we would both survive a testament to your marriage. No, that is not. That's a different Michelle. I swapped her over halfway through, Tammy. She's the other one. The other one. This is Mark 2, 2.0. You wish. So now I've got the, the skin. That actually hanging down is that lovely thick. It is almost, it is almost a crust. And I know that sounds disgusting but it tastes a little bit like double cream so imagine a little layer of double cream that's just set on top of your your yogurt yogurt oh it's yogurt mm. so witty shali says keep safe from the philippines <laughs> that is that's my favorite thing at the moment that is my favorite thing you've got a little sourness of the yogurt. You've got that honeycomb. Just as you but as you push your tongue up at the root, the honeycomb sort of oozes out all that beautiful honey. It's not the most floral honey, so the flavours aren't overly floral because it's it's classed as a mixed flower honey. Stuart said, "Doesn't go with beer. Good boosters." Oh, it does. It does. This turns my straight away. This turns my beer into a mead. And Rina says, I should take the spoon again for that comment. <laughs> I will. I'm going back in, Rena. No, I should take the spoon off of you again for you being rude to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, what Rena meant for that comment about what she meant was that comment about not drinking beer. Yes. With this, she meant that's what she meant, I'm sure. No, she, she actually put Michelle in the comment. Rena, she actually, whoop. Oops, I'm collapsing you now. You see, I've loosened that off too much now, and it's it, you're going to go all over the place. Um, and it's on a sucker cup, so it's hard for me. To... Michelle is joining in. I took the spoon because I needed it. She's, the honey. She has. She only took. <laughs> she's, she, she, she only took. We've only got one teaspoon. <laughs> we've only got one teaspoon in the whole apartment. So she took that spoon for selfish reasons. <laughs> it wasn't because he was licking it. <laughs> wasn't yeah. You know, she even washed it. She wouldn't even trust trust my coronavirus. I got two. This is this is a two strawberry, two strawberry, one lump of honeycomb. This one is dangerous. Stuart says, um, "Ha ha, 1786 are on the phone. They want their drink back." <laughs> my perceive has me wanting strawberries and cream or strawberry shortcake now. Do you remember in in the uh, Earlier video, we had that like that clotted cream that um, not Yufka, Yufka is the pastry. Yeah, um, yeah something else. Ch Chelak. Uh, mm. Somebody, if you remember the name of that double cream, that thick <laughs> clotted cream. Well, I had that cream um, the next day with strawberries and honey, and it was delicious. It was as delicious as this. Yeah, as delicious as this. Hey, Mac. Hi, Mac. Kaimak? Kaimak. 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 Which is a sort of... Pardon me. <laughs> I'm going to just open a window and let a bit of fresh air in. It's warm. Wendy Johnson says beer goes back with about everything. This beer goes with that. Perfect. It's a nice pairing. Delicious. Ben said I should have known sweet treats would feature on this live stream. <laughs> Sweet treats. I got those sweet figs, and I've got uh, my pistachios. So I've got that little bit of saltiness there as well, Ben. So, what else did we want to talk about today, Michelle? We've we've been working hard on the vlog, so so please. Uh, I know a lot of you've been saying you, you like them, so I'm really pleased. Uh, a friend of mine actually even said he's going out to buy a cat because of all the cats featured in it's the videos. 
he's going to get a cat. If he watches this, I'd like to say to him, Reese, my good old buddy, um, I'd like you to, to try and think about getting one from a rescue place rather than any other method, if you, if you can. If you're going to get cats at all, always try and get them from a rescue place because there are so many cats that need homes. Uh, don't go to a, to a breeder. It, uh, I, I, no, I'm, that's not controversial. I, I think it's just the way you should do it. I Any pet. Three or two little tiny ones today. Yeah, Michelle saw t t some way. new kittens on the street. Little tiny. Tiny ones, they were just two of them. Like little. On the street. <laughs> I hope they're safe. I mean, there's so many cats on the street here in Istanbul that they're very street savvy. You might have noticed the other day uh, in the video yesterday, uh, there was a, there's a lovely guy next door to us here and his. Um, Hello, Stuart. Um, and his. No, he's saying 100% Steve to what you said about getting cats from the rescue. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> um, Hi, Phil's got to go, so it says bye. Cheers, Phil. Uh, the, the guy next door to me was telling me about the cats, and I put that little clip into the, into the video yesterday. He was telling me about the names, the different varieties of cats here, and then he said about the white cats, the van cats, V A N, van cats, which are really famous here in uh, Turkey they come from a little area a city called Van and uh, they have their white cats and they have two colored eyes like a blue and a green eye and he's telling me about this and I thought wow that's strange because my son has this pure white cat in Australia with a blue and and a green eye which he got from a rescue uh, a, a, a rescue place from possibly from the the SPCA or somewhere similar um, and it turns out this cat my son's cat is one of those sort of Turkish cats. It may be a van cat. It may be um, a Turkish Angora cat. So they both of them have, but he's got these beautiful uh, eyes, absolutely unusual. And so if you see those white cats around, uh, they originate from this, this part of the world, unless somebody tells me otherwise, of course. Um, you know, we state these facts as if we know what we're talking about, don't we? Because two people in the street have told us, and now I'm the Wikipedia of cats. Mm -hmm. So, um, Miko Istanbul said those van cats like swimming. Mm. It is rumoured that the van cats love to swim in the van lake uh, in the area. But that's kind of been a little bit, that not entirely true. It's, it's sort of more of a legend. I think some of them do, because there's another cat that is actually a swimming cat that's in the same area. Anyway, I'm not going to Wikipedia to, to, to death. This is all stuff. So Merzan said, how is your street at the moment? And Ben said, yes, how many people are outside, Steve? And Piper says, yes, um, I'm home because of a broken ankle and a stroke in 2016. These live streams keep me going from going crazy. Oh, Piper. Sorry to hear about that. Uh, out this window, out the round window, it's like um, play school, there are two gentlemen holding up a bike. And out the other window, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five gentlemen. It's two minutes past 12, so we are in curfew. Holding up a liquor store. <laughs> Whoops. So Stuart says we have four rescue pets it's quite um, quiet it's quite quiet toad the dog mole badger and ratty all cats can you guess the theme yes uh wind in the willows <laughs> <laughs> so i should have let you i should have let you um you guys guess that that's for i'm answering your questions tammy the wisteria um, I filmed it the other day. There's, there's, they, they didn't really come to much. Uh, I think below me on the, 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 that looks to me like it's a grape vine or it's some other sort of vine. It could be a clematis. I'm not sure. It could. It's definitely not a wisteria below me. Further up the street, that's definitely a wisteria, same as my mother has back home in Australia. I think that was a grapevine. I think they were that golden leaves. Yes, uh, they look like grape. They look like vine leaves. Yeah. Leaves, leaves. I have a problem with leaves, the word. Um, but they came with a, a little flurry. You know, normally when the wisteria comes, it comes like in masses. It came with possibly about six or eight flowering plants and then seemed to die. So I don't know whether it's it was just flowering early or whether that's normal with wisteria. Normally I would have expected to see a whole sort of beauty of... Um, oh, 
I would have expected to see a, an absolute beauty of of, of uh, wisteria, you know, that like grapes hanging there. Um, when the pubs open again after the herbs lesson. <laughs> you already paid me for the herb lesson. Thank you, ma'am. Paul, thank you very much. Um, Chris, Chris Garton asked earlier on um, any updates on beyond the um, lockdown, and then he just asked any updates on the Camino. Um, we've got some. We've got some. We've got mixed. How do I say? We've got mixed ideas. I don't know how you people are feeling. If you're feeling the same as us, you sort of don't know where to plan. The Camino de Santiago was meant to be walked for us in May. Uh, we didn't mind putting it off to April, but the longer it, the longer we have to put it off to. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Ignore my dates. I'll get them all wrong. I'll, 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 I'm, if you want to know dates, ask Michelle. If we anyway, basically, if we leave it too long, if we're kept here too long, we're going to have to walk it through the height of the summer. It's not a good time to walk the Camino in the height of the summer. So I'm loath to sort of go there for sort of uh, July, August, and if that actually becomes inevitable, then we will end up doing it in the autumn. And we find something else to do between now and then. We just have to. We just have to find something else to do. We, 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 there's no flights leaving this area. Istanbul won't have any flights leaving to countries outside of Istanbul. I think until about the 15th of, of this month. And Spain's not opening until the And, and it's limited. Where you can fly to from here is limited. Uh, it's not like you can fly to everywhere. It's only places that they agree to fly to, and it's only places that are open to fly to. So, so going to. France, Spain is probably not an option on the 15th. So at the very least, we're looking at um, end of June. And then we get into, are we June now? M Monday we're June, yeah. Yeah, so we're June. So gosh, hasn't where have the days gone, mm -hmm. everybody? Where have the days gone? So I'm just going to show you something because I know you love to look outside the window. Here's one of those guys collecting the, the, the rubbish. Just change, change tack for a little while. I love these guys. They're, they're, you can see them coming along. Just watch this. Now, those of you that live in Istanbul, this isn't that interesting, but for those of us that don't live here, look at the size of that collection bag that he's got on the back. And he comes up to the truck and he sort of, he doesn't take any nonsense. He sort of says, you know, I'm going through. You've got to let me, you've got to let me through. So the truck's gonna move out the way. Um, and then he'll come through. I will get back to the Camino in a minute. And there he goes. And he collects his, some of them collect cardboard, some of them collect bottles. The other recycling guys, yeah. So there he is. When he goes back to the front there, he's sort of, it's almost like getting on a gymnastics machine. He sort of has to, lift the thing up gamer timer says hey and Dwayne says hi interesting isn't it uh, there are hundreds of these guys all around Istanbul and you know you've seen the streets you've seen how steep the streets are sometimes when you're walking through the center or down towards uh, Karakoy or you're going down the road here near us, they almost they almost balance themselves on those two, the arms of their things and ski down the, the road at uh, uh, amazing speed. And then they kind of dump the whole bag down to use as brakes. So the whole bag drops down onto the uh, surface of the road and they sort of come to us and they put their feet, splay their feet out like that in front of themselves and come to a stop which they have to do because they're often meeting on oncoming trucks. Interesting. So, um, back to the Camino. It, we don't know because... Well, I think we, it's more and more erring towards autumn because we're not going to get into Spain until July, August. We would, if we want to go and do the Camino, it has to be soon. And um, it's looking... It's kind of down to governments opening up a bit earlier. I don't want to do the Camino through the hot summer because northern Spain is way too hot for those big, you know, to do 800 kilometer walk. Uh, it'll be too hot. 
So we're probably Most going to, people. but we're, it's, it's going to happen. As for the borders, they're slowly opening um, over the next uh, four weeks or so borders. Uh, at the moment, you can't cross over land outside of Turkey to another country uh, and you can't fly anywhere. Um, but that's going to change on the 15th and some of the land borders are going to open. Um, the UK, the, the, the United Kingdom, is just for some reason decided to introduce uh, self-isolation uh, <laughs> at the end of it all. They've decided to do. So what's happened, because the UK are, are, are forcing people as of in a few weeks time to isolate themselves when they arrive in a country, um, a lot of countries are reciprocating by saying Brits, British people can't, can't come to there, so you can't go to Greece. You probably possibly won't be able to go to Turkey. So some airlines might restrict where we can fly to. Um, our preference would have been to go across land to France and then do the walk. So does that does that help? So we, we've got the issue as well that a lot of the European countries are opening up to Europeans, but we're actually coming from Turkey, which is not Europe. So will they let us come? Although we're not Turkish. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain you something here. There's no love loss between <laughs> Turkey and Greece, for example. They, they don't have um, a great deal of... Well, you either know it or you don't. There's, there's no love loss between Turkey and Greece. And if we wanted to cross into Greece, they may not be very welcoming of people that have, have been uh, a length of time during isolation in Turkey. So it's hard. It's hard to know. The original plan was to maybe even go to Georgia and go into Bulgaria. Georgia. No, no, we were going to go to originally. Yeah, you forgot. Yeah. Michelle's even forgotten right in the early days. <laughs> Georgia, which is the other end of, of, um, of Turkey, was one of our plans. Um, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped. Gamer Time is saying there's no issue between Turkish and Greek people. It's politics. Um, n no, I, I don't necessarily agree. It definitely is. Politicians are always a problem, but I do get a lot of, I don't know, I, 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 I do get a lot of animosity between the two countries. It, it can be, and, and it is, it possibly is not entirely just politics. It can be a little bit religious. It can be a little bit historic. And, and there is, no, there is animal animosity. Um, there is a sort of uh, tit for tat. Um, and, and both countries are clearly beautiful people with beautiful countries and lovely culture and history. I, I would love to see them all just come together, but there is, and it is not just politics, but it's not just political. I can't tell you why I say that. I'd have to explain to people I've spoken to here, and that wouldn't necessarily show things in a good light. Did I say, uh, Ben said it would be nice to go to Spain in July or August to stay there for a month or so before the coup? Um, yes, we, we may do something like that, Ben. Um, we, may, we already have a plan. I think I've said this before. We had plans because of family commitments and, and some friends. We were going to be in Greece uh, during August. So whether whether that could fall through, uh, we're not 100% sure because, you know, for, for all the same reasons. So technically, we would have been in Greece anyway. Had this not, nothing could happen, we would have been touring around this part of Europe for some time. We would have probably spent a month in Greece um, after the Camino or even occasionally we thought about doing it before, uh, you know, before the Camino. It's, it's, it's tricky. So we would probably, mm. we, would, we would certainly be in this area. Unless we're not, unless suddenly we're in, uh, <laughs> you know, Guatemala or somewhere like that, which is which is something we've talked about. You know, we've talked about we've talked about heading to to Mexico. We've talked about heading to South America. We've talked about going to the USA and going to all different parts of Europe. And we've talked about going back to Asia. And it, I even I haven't said this to Michelle. I even had a, a stage where I thought, darn it, I'm going to go back to China just to sort of rub every, everybody's noses in it. I'm going to go to Wuhan. So Chris has a good question. Were you given any info as tourists from the government, tourism people, or even the phone company? Or do you have to find all this out yourself? Sort of. Uh, the government here, uh, no, not a lot. I mean, uh, there was a period when masks were 
illegal to sell on the streets and everybody wanted them. And then they, they said everybody was going to get them delivered to their homes and nobody seemed to get them. Um, and then they weren't allowed to retail them anywhere for over a dollar. So all the nice masks vanished off the streets and uh, it was going to be uh, a lira, sorry, yeah, lira. Uh, for all the paper. So no, we get mixed information. I did tweet the president the other day to ask him a question. He didn't bother replying, so I'm guessing he's busy. <laughs> and like even for this curfew, it was only announced last night. Wasn't yeah, it? this curfew was only announced last night. The the information is mixed, but you if you look at enough sources, you you get to a point where it seems to make some sense. Um, has been mentioned. Uh, Ask me another question. I can't be too political and, and I don't want to start, you know, uh, criticising what's happening because actually the people of Turkey have been super welcoming and the people of Turkey, the people in our streets and the people around us have been wonderful. And, and realistically, I suspect if the government were just over here, they would be great, but they're not. And they don't know who we are. They don't know. They don't know us from Adam. So what what do they care okay so Merza says um please guide me on how to travel without money <laughs> <laughs> that's <travel>. hard <laughs> without money michelle should write michelle and i should write a book about how to travel with very little money because we do travel with very little money people tend to think we're, we're exceptionally wealthy and we're not um we do we are very good at traveling with with very limited resources there is no way to travel without money. Ben has actually answered a little bit. He says, travel light and consider renting a room in a house share instead of a property just for yourself is a cheaper option for long term travel. Exactly. I mean, Ben, we talked about this before. I don't know if I talked about it in any detail. For example, how do we stay five months in Sicily? Sicily is a very expensive place to visit. If you stay in a hotel there, you'll be paying two, three, four hundred dollars a night for a hotel. OK, so as a tourist, traveling to a place like Cecilia, you know, you're going to pay a lot of money. It's expensive. And that's why people who go there in the summertime um, budget, you know, quite a few thousand dollars for a holiday there. Well, Michelle and I, when we went to Sicily, we went in the winter time, and we stayed in the cheapest accommodation we could find whilst we started to learn from the locals how much the cost of rent was. So I would go around and talk to them and say, well, how much do you pay for your apartment? Or how much do you pay for your house? And they'd say to me, you know, oh, you know, 300 euros or something like that. And you think, okay, well, um, online, <laughs> they're advertised to the expat, you know, to, to foreigners who are traveling, that apartment will be 4,000 euros, 3,000 euros. So I get to know what the ballpark figure is. How much does it cost? You can use websites, actually, recently. that We never used to do this. I used to do all the work myself. But there are websites like Numio. N-U-M-B-E-O, I think it's called, and that will give you costs of living in different countries. It's modestly accurate. It's not perfect. So we would rock up to a place like Sicily and we would start to put our feelers out to find out what the cost is. And we know we want to spend more than more than a, a week here. So we, we start to talk to locals. And eventually I found that, that beautiful apartment we had in, this, in, in Sicily had two floors, had a big burning log fire, had two bedrooms, had a lovely kitchen, had, was right in the center of Noto in, in a most beautiful city. I think we paid about 300 euros or 400 euros a month for that apartment. So less than it was for a day in a, in a, in a hotel. If you want to travel and you want to travel for a long term, you have to learn to travel smart. You have to learn, you, you when people, when I see families go away, even recently, my sister went away on a holiday and she budgeted X thousand dollars to go away. But when I see families go away on a holiday, uh, they talk about, you know, I've saved and I'm going to go away. Now I hear people saying three, four, five, six thousand dollars to go away with a family for a holiday. If Mich And they go for a week, 10 days, two weeks. If Michelle and I spent three, four, six thousand dollars every 10 days, we would have to be billionaires to just to stay on the road. You have to be able to travel cheaper than it would be to stay at home. Can you travel with no money? It's not possible, not unless you can find some sort of source of income. Can you travel for less than it costs you to stay at home? Yes, quite considerably less if, if you know what, what to do.
Does that help? <laughs> I've still got a bit of honey here. Sorry, I'm going to keep dipping in because... Okay, um, Luke Wooden says, making you a Nutella bread share for breakfast. <clears throat> for breakfast? Yum. Stuart says, can you do a McDonald's review soon, please? They're um, closed. They're closed. No, I can't. And, you know, I don't eat in McDonald's. I'm not a McDonald's person. I do it out of interesting countries that give really unusual McDonald's. So, no, I, 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 the only time I ever eat in a McDonald's is when I do a review. Otherwise, I almost never would eat there by choice. They do anything different. So, check. when they open, I will see. Now, if they do some amazing, unusual Turkish dishes here, I'll go in and and check it out but if they do the stuff that they do back home you you won't get me in there you wouldn't be able to drag me in there because i don't like the food i just you know there is such good food on the streets here why would i possibly want to eat in in mcdonald's you know with respect no, without any respect arena says uh, what the prez ignored you shocking and paul says don't feel bad steve the president ignores my prez too <laughs> i I was quite surprised. I thought he'd be waiting for it and quite excited to get my tweet. But no, he did not. But I did tweet out the telecom, the tel uh, Turk cell, and, and they came back to me. So that was good. Eddie it, says, it didn't help. You asked for questions. What is the best pasta dish you have ever had? Mm. That's quite easy. You might be surprised that that's quite easy. Just let me finish this last <laughs> bit of honey and strawberry. Oh, it's not so easy now. <laughs> I've just remembered a couple. <laughs> the very best pastas I've ever had have been pastas that have been fresh. That's always going to be fresh pasta always 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 and it's so easy to make i've got a recipe there if you want to make fresh pasta um it is you know it's eggs salt and, and flour it, it doesn't get any easier i get michelle to put a recipe up make some homemade pasta make it soft enough to roll it you don't need a roller you can you can roll it out and you can cut it into tagliatelle ta uh, um, spaghetti you can you can do what the fettuccine whatever you want anyway back to the best Two, two players here. In Sicily, I had pasta alla norma. Pasta alla norma is the most basic of pasta served with um, uh, aubergines or eggplants that are fried. They, they, they fry them in a little salt, so they're so caramelized. Pasta alla norma means very normal pasta or very basic normal it means normal pasta and it's a sort of peasant dish and the common dish of Sicilia and um, puttanesca pasta puttanesca is another but it's not my favorite that's not my not going to be one of my favorite uh, uh, dishes it's so simple with a little fresh olive oil and served it is just so delicious that is in recent memory one of the most beautiful pastas I've had, and it is it is so simple. But you, I tell you, fresh pasta with very little sauce, just very little sauce. Um, the next best pasta I had I, is is the one I make myself, and 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 it would and and to be honest, arguably the one I make is the best I've ever tasted. But I also had it in Lucca, which is uh, just sort of south of Florence or Florence in, in, in Italy. It's where I learned about this pasta in the first place. When I make guanciale, which is a pig cheek bacon that I make, um, I make it with almost every time I get my hands on a whole pig or a half pig. But when we were rearing our own pigs, um, I made guanciale with our Tamworth um, pigs. They're a Tamworth uh, Gloucester old spot mix so they were ginger pigs so i make one charlie the best bacon you'll ever have call it bacon right it is bacon the most flavorsome baker bacon and then fry that one charlie so it extracts all the oil out of it and then make a real carbonara a real true carbonara with no cream 
Now, I like carbonara with cream and mushrooms and all the stuff that we put nonsense. We put it in the West. I like it. It's a very delicious. It, it's the sort of Ben and Jerry of uh, of carbonara. But do it really naturally. Use the eggs to emulsify into a fat. And that is the best um, pasta. That's probably my number one pasta. A, a really good carbonara uh, with fresh pasta. It has to be with fresh pasta. So, so did that answer that? I think so. Ask me another question like that that gets me rolling. I love those questions that I can, I hope you don't mind them. Is it all right that I answer in more than two words? I hope so. I, I don't, I, it's my default. You saw that. <laughs> I'm going back up to another question. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's my default mode, Ben. I haven't got, I don't have a, I don't, this doesn't have a handbrake on it, unfortunately. I've got so far up now to go back to the questions. <laughs> Dwayne says, how long will you remain in Turkey? Uh, Dwayne, we don't know. That, I think I've kind of answered. Um, we don't know. Um, ben asks, how did you get the property so cheap in Italy? Steve, did you speak in person to the landlord or on the website the property was advertised? No, we found many properties for that sort of price. We found many, many properties. It wasn't just the one. That's the normal price. Most young people who are living in Sicilia, they are paying between 200 and 400 euros for their properties. At 200, you're not going to get anything that nice. At three to 400 euros, you can get really nice properties and they're living there. That's their, you know, this is what they pay rent if they're living in the country and they're paying for 12 months. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit more because we're not going to take a long term. Yes. It's not a year or six if months. If you just so want a month, nobody's going to give you that rate. But let's say the, the normal rate um, for an apartment would be 350 euros. You might have to pay 450 to 500 euros to get them to let you rent that for a shorter term. So we found some beautiful properties that were around that price bracket. We've done that many times. Um, I, I, I remember when we were in, um, in Japan, in Fukuoka, in Japan, uh, we met people who were staying there long term that weren't travelers like Miss, they weren't cheapskates like Michelle and I that know how to find, do you mind being called a cheapskate? You're the cheapskate. All right, they weren't, they weren't frugal That's travelers the like Michelle and I that were really pleased that they got an apartment for 1500 US dollars a month and 1500 US dollars a month in, in Japan is super, super cheap. Now, I hope they don't come in and watch this because yes. they do watch some of our stuff. <laughs> I didn't like to say to them that our apartment that we found in Japan, we were paying $700 and was that Australian? Yeah. I think it was Australian, <laughs> so that's only about 500 um, at the current rate, maybe five to 700 dollars a month for our lovely lovely apartment with everything inclusive it was, small, but it, was it was small but it was it was proper japanese sort of you know cute in that sort of uh, tamagotchi sort of cuteness um modern clean ref very well uh, appointed and again that was down to just getting to know I, I talk to everybody if you don't talk to people and you travel then you're going to get nowhere if you're not a chatterbox because I talk to people and I find out what they're paying and I found out the cost of an apartment for students, for um, uh, young couples, what it what because I thought to myself, there's no way they're paying, because like you can see that they can't pay $3,000 a month, a lot of these, so you get to work out what they're paying and they're generally paying about that price. Then you have to be clever and find that apartment. You have to find someone that's desperate enough to rent to you. And, and do it for maybe just two months or three months. We we wouldn't get those deals for a month, I don't think. You need to be there longer than a month. So does that help? Would this make, is this interesting stuff? I, I don't know. And to me, it's just the, the boring niceties of travel. Or as Ben says, I like, I, I like to talk. Chris Garton says, do you have a home back in Australia or do you stay with family when you return? No, we stay with family when we return now, Chris. We, we don't really have a, a proper home base back in Australia. Um, so when we go back, we, we just go back. Because we're not there very often. We, we only go back for uh, a month, a year at the most. Uh, a bit longer sometimes. Hello, Mother. 
I, I love to go and stay with 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 my mother. She she's great. So we we enjoy staying with her. She's she's wonderful. Wayne says this is we get on really well. <laughs> I've gone back to the now. <clears throat> uh, Piper says I'm frugal too. Good. Uh, Nothing wrong with being frugal, Piper. Nothing wrong with being frugal. You can make frugal people can make a beer last a whole <laughs> live stream. No, it's just because you don't drink beers very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Nadine says, "Hi, Steve. Which residential area of Istanbul would you recommend to stay in for a month?" <laughs> I don't know it that well. Nadim said that, was yes. it? Nadim, I don't know it that well. People, people, are, I like where we are. Beyglu. Beyglu, B-A-Y-A-G-L-E-U with some glue in it. I don't know how they spell it even, but and, and I really don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Beyglu. I haven't got the G in it. I'm not doing anything specific. You don't pronounce the G. <laughs> you don't pronounce the G. Beyglu. Um I like this area. Nothing I think this is a real... This, you, what you don't want to be is down the bottom of a hill. <laughs> Although you, you're going to have to be down the bottom of a hill at some point. So, yeah, Beyglu. But I don't think you pronounce the G. Quattro Girl said, yeah, Beyglu. 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 Um, so, you... This is a nice area. This is very residential. There's a lot of families live here. There's a lot of Airbnbs in this area. It's also quite nice to be on the Asian side of um, uh, Istanbul as well. There's, it's divided by the Bosphorus uh, into two sort of sides, the Asian side. And we haven't been across the Asian side. We will be going there soon to check it out. Apparently, it's much more modern than the old side of Istanbul. But it's, it's, there's some areas there. If you go into Google and just type what are the best areas to stay in Istanbul, it will it will give you answers, you know, but don't take those with, it's like Wikipedia, it's only as accurate as the last person that wrote it. Um, I, I, I'll give you, my advice would be to come to this area and if you if you need to, um, you're very close to the centre of the city, we can walk as you can see to the centre of the city, um, but there may be better places and I, we just haven't been able to get around. Dwayne says, do you think the cost of air travel will go down? I, we've talked about this before, Dwayne. Everybody around me keeps telling me how the prices are going to go up and I keep reassuring them they're going to go down. Why, you might ask. Well, you're lucky there, Dwayne, because I'm here to tell you. <laughs> I don't, look, I, I haven't got all the answers, but this is my logic from, from, from travelling, right? Lots of people are hurting at the moment financially. We're not all, you know, rolling in cash. A lot of people have lost money during this recession. Sure, I know a lot of people have made a lot of money, but, but the majority of people have done, not done that well. Even if you're being furloughed from your job and you're getting 80%, you're still getting less money than you were getting when you were working. So if the airlines open up, now, initially, they're going to be the prices will be high because people are rushing to try and get back to their homes and things. But when the airlines open up, um, even though they are struggling, they are financially crippled at the moment, they are not going to be able to charge five hundred dollars to fly from Istanbul to Paris because nobody's got the money to fly those flights. You know, if you want to go, if they start advertising flights that we used to be ninety nine dollars, say from London to Paris or from Barcelona to Madrid uh, and they start trying to get high prices no one will fly those planes will be popping backwards and forwards empty and airport airlines are desperate not to let planes take off the runway that haven't got people in them because they are loss making uh, services so in order to get people on the planes they're going to have to drop those prices in order to encourage people who don't want to travel because a lot of people are frightened to travel at the moment they're going to have to drop the prices so I see there being a very intense uh, price war coming along over the next six months and we will see probably the lowest flying prices you've ever seen. I don't think that's a good thing and I do think a lot of airlines will go bust and I think there will be less planes flying than there used to be. But I do think the ones that are flying will be still will be cheaper to fly on. Um, you heard it here first. See if I'm right. I, I, I know I, I know that's going to happen. I just feel it. 
before you know I, I ran businesses for many years so I, I do have a reasonable business head on me I understand the economics of running running a company so um, that's, that's what I believe thank you Piper yeah. um, going back on here Paul says I'm definitely not frugal if it means drinking only one beer during the live stream <laughs> Audio Cancer says, beer, speaking of beer, which one is your favourite? Um, globally or here? I, no, I'll just answer that, simple enough. I, I absolutely adore the English ales. I'm a real ale man myself. I love English real ales. If I could have a really well-made, you know, Bishop's tip, Tipple, uh, Old Speckled Hen, Hen's Tooth. Uh, I know these are commercial beers, but I love those sort of beers. I love, um, I love, I love some of our Australian browns. You know, the uh, Victoria's uh, bitters make some some brown ales. So I like darker beers. I don't, I don't really like lagers very much or any commercial lager style drink. If I'm go if I drank a lot of beer, it would always be really good hopsy ales, nice IPAs. We have fantastic beers in Australia. We have a huge um, industry of independent brewers. If you like your beers, Australia has fantastic beers. But the best beers I've ever had have been in the sort of the small cities and towns of the UK. But having said that, a lot of those have gone. A lot of the big breweries now have bought out those things. Like I think, um, uh, I don't know the names, but drinks like, Old Speckled Hen, Hen's Tooth, uh, Old Peculiar. Those beers now are all owned by, by large corporations, but they're still good beers. Oh. I know, I'll eventually get the comments then, don't worry, he'll, he'll give, me, give me a space. My voice, is, I'm gonna pause, right? You're gonna pause. Michelle's gonna ask at least two or three questions. I've got to go back up now, because I've got to find them all. You can ask them again if she's if she's. If I've missed you, just ask slow. me again. So, just reading quickly. So, um, Ganzo said I made the perfectly cooked rice with your method, and it was so delicious. I've never eaten good. such good rice. It's it's impossible <laughs> it's impossible not to cook good rice. I I argue that one far too often on the internet, but thank you. Um, Eddie says, are there any Turkish style pizzas? Um, yes. Uh, but don't ask me to name them yet. I, I, they're all over the place. Some fantastic pizza style breads with cheeses and all sorts in them. Some beautiful breads. I, I need to, I need to wait until those shops have opened before I know a bit more about them. Um, Petri's in. Hey, Stephen, Michelle, just getting off work. Hey, Petri. Um, audio cancer did mean uh, globally the beers. So you answered that question correctly. Okay. Rina yeah. says, have you ever tried bourbon beer, Steve? Bourbon, bourbon beer? Bourbon beer. B-O-B-O-U-R-B-O-N? Uh, so is that like a, like a bourbon, like a whiskey beer? Um, I haven't. No, I, a, a regular beer I quite like drinking would be a Newcastle brown ale. That's a Nuki, Nuki brown, that's a good uh, brown ale. Um, but we also have some beautiful chocolate, multi -cho uh, chocolate ales in uh, the Bullant Brewery in, in Australia. You won't know about these places because they're small. Bullant, I've done a video, I went to see them. Um, Mornington Peninsula beers, fantastic. Um, some of their chocolate malts <sighs> to die for, just, just delicious beers. The only thing is they don't know how to drink them because your, Aussie, your average Aussie always wants to chill their beer and those beers should never be chilled. And the brewers know that, but the public don't. So your average Aussie is always going to chill that beer down. The brewers know, and they're trying to educate people that a cold chocolate, brown chocolate, brown ale, and they have lovely chocolatey notes. As soon as you chill them down, you can't taste those flavors. <clears throat> they know it. We'll get there. We'll educate. We'll educate eventually. So I think I've caught up with the questions. If I've missed your question, you have to write it again. <laughs> I do find on these I'm a bit of a wuss, really, because on these live shows, I find my voice starts to wane. Well, I think Sorry, it's, not... it's later in the, in the day, 
and you've been chatting a lot to us on the street today. I've as been well. talking all day. I kept sending talking. him out to get things and he to get. She sent me. She she came downstairs or she 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 messaged me and came down to the bottom and said, "Don't forget to get the mushrooms." No, I won't forget to get the mushroom. So so I went and I did have quite a few things to get. I had to get strawberries and cherries, and beans, and we'd been shopping and I was just doing the local grocery stores and I came back upstairs and we sat for half an hour and she said where's the mushrooms <laughs> so I had to go back downstairs and get the mushrooms what else did you forget what else did I forget the yogurt I had to go and get the yogurt Shell had to go down and get the yogurt because <laughs> I was busy editing by that point so um Wukula San said how did you guys find your current apartment where you're standing right now in Turkey. This is quite an easy one. This is just an Airbnb. The price is not super cheap. It's 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 the normal low season prices for here. We're actually paying quite a lot more to be here in Turkey than we would have liked to be paying. Um, my friend over the road here pays half of half what I pay. Um, I would say this whole coronavirus thing has kind of knocked us a bit on our heads we're we're not perhaps doing as being as smart price wise as as we should have been but it's perfectly fine we're, it's within what we we consider a reasonable a reasonable cost but it's i will go into it at some other date but i'm still here the, the, these guys all know who i am they they even some of them drop in and, and watch the shows uh, not on, during the live shows, but I think they watch them back later. So I have to be a little careful what I say. So Merzan says a quick wants a quick apartment tour, and Ben says the apartment's huge. It's like a mansion. It is. It's like the TARDIS in here. Okay. Quick apartment tour. It's not really an apartment, Merzan. It's uh, it's just a little. It's messy. It's a bit messy, right? Michelle won't be too bit. happy. That is our day. kitchen. It's like a kitchen that you'd find. In a in a in an RV or a caravan, we for some reason we have two sofas. A little table. We have my little table over there. We have a bedroom through here. I'm not going to go in there. It could be messy. And we have a bathroom in there. And that is, it. is pretty much it. So it's a it's a bed sit, but it's not. It's a bed sit with a room. <laughs> and it does us fine. It's like a kitchenette more than a kitchen. Yeah, it's got almost no countertop because yeah. because I take that little gas stove off sometimes if I want to make bread or or do anything where I need some countertop space. <clears throat> it's it's fine. It's perfectly good. I, I think I couldn't live in a in this situation for a long much longer. I mean, I could do it for another three months or so, but I couldn't do it for a year. I'd, I'd need more space because there's not. Not more space. Just I mean, the table's not big enough. The kitchen's not spacious enough. Yeah, we would make I mean, it. We would make it so we had a bit more. We, we can would... actually work with the area we've got. Yes. We got the things in it. Yeah, I'd but put, it is nice. I put extra counter space in and, and things, you know. But I'm not going to start renovating my Airbnb. Daniel A says you've lost weight. You look really slim. I'm I'm wasting away, Daniel. And Ben I, says all those skips. I and I've found the skipping version. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I am not losing weight. Who said that? Daniel A said. You Daniel, I'm not losing weight, mate. I wish I was. I am putting weight on for sure, and I'm sure a lot of you possibly are too. Um, but uh, no, I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not losing weight. So I've, probably, it, I've probably put on a few kilos <laughs> since I've been here, to be frank. It's like a small bachelor suite with a bedroom attached to it. It is. It's like one of the things that we'd stay, you know, you might have done as a, as a student pad, maybe. Oh, it's a bit bigger than that. It's a bit more space than that. It's... Um, Merza said, is it well ventilated? Yes, it's got windows that open. Yeah, we have windows all around. It's probably the same size as our Japan pad or a bit bigger than our Japan yeah. apartment. But the Japanese know how to oh, fill a small space. Absolutely. I mean, in that area, we had so much more going on in that small area. We did. Oh, it's no, it's smaller, much smaller, oh, wasn't yeah. it? The Japanese was probably half the size of this, but it still had. So you didn't have a bedroom. No. It was all in here, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah if this was in Japan, you probably this would be a three-bedroom house. <laughs> yeah, you know, probably probably would. 
uh, I'm actually not probably joking there because even though our bedroom is tiny by Australian standards, it, it really, you know, the bed barely fits in the room. In Japan, that would probably have nice tatami floor down and it would have uh, three, three or four people sleeping in there. <coughs> Um, so, uh, I often think when I see these tiny homes that are very popular at the moment, that they haven't got a clue really, when they say they're tiny, they're often quite a bit bigger than the Japanese apartments that we stayed in. So, um, Wakeless, oh, I don't know how to say that, say Wakeless-san, so where do you wash your clothes? In the washing machine? Wakeless-san. <laughs> well, we have a washing machine, you, you may not have seen, it's in, no, it's in the bathroom. You have a proper full-size washing yes. machine. But that's quite nice for me, because the first way I often have a washing machine. That's quite nice for me as well, because normally I do all the washing. <laughs> Daniel A says, what are you eating? Uh, I am eating um, Turkish grown um, pistachio nuts. Yes, Piper just answered that. I think Steve's eating pistachios. I am, and they're nice and salty. And Merza says, is your street noisy? Our street is noisy. I did the, to, for tomorrow's vlog, we filmed it about two or three times and I, I, I got a bit annoyed. You might even still see that if I, if I decide to use that clip. I got a bit annoyed because nobody would shut up. <laughs> it's like every time I went to talk, somebody else, there, there was a veg guy out there shouting, oi, 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 get your bananas, get your bananas, and all this sort of nonsense, you know, at the, but at the top of their voices. And they're all out there talking now. It's uh, one, it's nearly one o'clock and people are out there chatting, drinking tea. Um, and what tends to happen is groups will sort of come in. Yeah, there's a group down there having tea at the corner. That's one o'clock in the morning. And some of them are quieter than others. And then we will get deliveries coming through, like our vegetable guy almost every second night comes at 2.30 in the morning with a truckload of vegetables and opens his electric door and, and plays his radio. But we, if we didn't, if it troubled us too much, we'd move. But it doesn't trouble us that much. I kind of like this very strange sort of old school feeling. It's a little bit like living in the 1920s or something. I, I, I feel it's like New York would have been, you know, back in the sort of 30s or... or um, it feels like a different era, you know, people dropping their baskets down to get their food uh, sent up on ropes and they shout down. Uh, having said that, we often talk to, to each other from friends of us. We talk from balcony to balcony, from window to window. It's almost impossible to hear each other sometimes because there's never not a motorbike going up and down the street. There's never not somebody, somebody else talking. So there. Garten says, would you ever live in a tiny house? Um, no, no, I don't think so. Um, yes, I would live in it for a trial, but I couldn't live in it forever. I, I, I like the tiny house movement. I think it's kind of good and it has its place, but I like a bit more space, you know. I, I don't really want to be living in a shoebox all the time. Uh, I can very much live minimalist, but I still want space. Well, we'd, we'd create our space outside, wouldn't we? <laughs> if we yeah. If, if, I had a t if the ideal tiny home would be some of the ones you see where they've got nice outdoor living as well. And, and, but, you know, where in a tiny home do you put your tool shed and keep all your gear or, or put your, set up your kitchen studio? Uh, I like them and I can understand. And I kind of know the psychology why people are doing it as well. It's just this need to feel um, that they have less debt, that they have less expense, because everybody's feeling drowned. Everyone's drowned in debt nowadays. Um, okay, not everybody, but you know, there's this constant feeling that you've got to buy, buy, buy. A tiny home does two things. It often alleviates the need to have a big mortgage and an, over, an overhead. Often your councils, your local authority expenses are a lot less. <coughs> Um, because you live in a tiny home and you accumulate less less stuff so I think that's where that that whole genre is is coming from and it's fascinating and I do it I, I live in 20 tiny homes for 20 weeks 
but I couldn't live in one tiny home for 20 weeks. Well, Ben's saying simpler lives for you. It's not just about debt or anything, but it's about the feeling of needing to keep lots of stuff forces you to remain min minimalist. I used to have a website that I ran years ago. It was a downsizing site. So we used to, t we used to, we used to write a long time ago now, this is another one of Michelle and I's lives, when downsizing or downscaling your life was very popular. So we were very much at the forefront of that before the internet really was as popular as now. There was no Facebook, but we had a website and we used to share information. And um, we, we were very in touch with that downsizing. Now downsizing is all about re the, the whole idea of downsizing your life or minimalizing your life is to actually reduce your dependency on the outside world, reduce your your artifacts and to try and live off the grid, to try, try and be self-sufficient. Um, there is still a website probably called downsizer.net. At one time I was an admin on that site, I used to do a lot of, I'm well, not an admin, I, I used to I used to partner with them on some bits and pieces. I don't know if they're still still um, running, but um, so we used to be very much into that downscaling or downsizing because we did it. We went from from too much crap to almost nothing and living like almost <coughs> completely self sufficient, you know growing almost all of our own vegetables, almost all of our own meat sources were coming from here. So we did that. So we were very much aware that Ben, we've been in that. Um, it, it's, it's from that experience, from understanding how to downscale or downsize your life. And- um, well, We're quite minimalist now. Yeah, I mean, look at the way we travel. We've got, we've got two small bags with not a lot of stuff. And we don't we we don't covet we don't covet uh, items, so that comes from that. And we didn't do it for a year. We did it we did it for many years. And um, so. Paul says, do you have any quick downsizing tips? Do it. Yeah. Uh, we also set up our. <coughs> so nuts. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. No, no, I, I won't have any. I've got my dear. Down, we could almost do a whole uh, live stream about this. I could talk about this till the end of the days. I don't know if you guys want me to keep talking. I'll end up downscaling my voice to a tiny little squeak. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of information about downsizing. Um, there used to be a terminology, a used bit of an argument between the two two scales because downsizing and um, downscaling was the two. We used to sort of uh, there was used to be a bit of bickering between the two sides because some people said it was all to do with downsizing, and we used to say no, it's not all to do. It's kind of like um, down gearing. I think that was the other word, down gearing. I think actually down gearing has actually lost its um it's lost its wording in a way but there was an er in the early stage of downsizing it was called down gearing and down gearing was shifting down a gear shifting your whole life down several uh, gears to a slower pace our philosophy michelle and i was always about down gearing and my friend's site was all about downsizing now downsizing has won out so i'll give them that it, because everybody seems to want to downsize now and but actually down you don't have to downsize to down gear you can stay in a mansion and down gear um, you can stay in your 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 existing lifestyle and down gear um, you can change the way you purchase stuff is a way of down gearing so you know for example is this getting boring please tell me if this is getting boring because Michelle and I have, for as long as I can remember, um, we like to, we, we're not coupon people. We don't, I know there's a thing in America called couponing and I, I can't be bothered with that lifestyle. I just can't, 
be bothered with the frugality of that sort of and the intensity of that thing. But I respect that. So that's an interesting way of living. But almost every single month, whether you're living in France or Japan, it's or, not boring. It's very interesting. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> so you will find that you can you can buy, for example, home brand cornflakes. I'll give you this as a simple example. It springs to mind. You can buy home brand cornflakes, which, in my mind, don't taste that good. You know, so I'm talking about the cheapest cornflakes made by, um, you know. Uh, Woolworths in Australia or Tesco's in, in the UK or, or Walmart cornflakes. And you might prefer uh, Kellogg's cornflakes. You know, you might think they're, they're, they taste better. I actually think they do taste better, but that's a personal, it's a personal choice, right? But but Kellogg's cornflakes cost double the price of, and sometimes more, than the home brand cornflakes. But I guarantee you, at least once a year, uh, sorry, sorry, not once a year, well, at least once a month, sometimes two or three times a month, Kellogg's do specials where they're selling their cornflakes for half price or buy a pack, get 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 two, or, or there's a 40% off. Now, the moment they become 40% off, they literally become the same price, if not less, than the home brand cornflakes. Is this okay to say this yeah, stuff, yeah, Michelle? Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have no problem. Yes, and our kids shop this way now. <laughs> crazy and they, they don't not none of them are short of money but the, but this is the way you you live your life and it's not hard, a hardship we would go and we would buy two months worth of cornflakes we, like, we would buy i used to come back from my place my neighbor used to say and we, we'd come back it sounds really frugal but we, we're not we're really very giving and very i am a a big giver you know i don't mind giving stuff and i don't penny pinch on things but I just can't see the sense in not doing this I would go and buy you know 30 pack not 30 but you know 10 or 15 packs of the big family packs of cornflakes we had plenty of space to store it you pop it there that way the family has good quality products you know like Kellogg's cornflakes you're not feeling like you're nitpicking and having white boxes of cornflakes that taste like sort of sawdust or, or road sweepings you're having high quality products, you're paying a fraction of the price that everybody else pays. Um, I have friends, for example, and I won't say names of people, but I have friends, for example, that will buy a jar of coffee on the drive home from work in the service station. They'll go in the servo, buy a jar of coffee, Nescafe Gold, um, and a, a jar of Nescafe Gold, say in, in Australia, might cost $20 for a jar of Nesca a big jar. Um, and they wouldn't think anything. They just add it on their credit, on their debit card, along with you know seventy bucks for fuel and a, and, and a packet of you know cigarettes. We don't smoke, so that's another saving. But uh, you know, they buy these sort of things willy nilly as they drive back, and would never consider waiting to see when the cost of Nescafe Gold, if that's what you like. I don't like instant coffee, and I never buy it. But, but we always buy uh, coffee beans. We've got a couple of. Brands of coffee beans. I like Lavazza. Right? I like Lavazza, and I like um, uh, another famous brand. We we buy them when they're half on price. half price. They are. It makes them chips cheapest chips. Um, now you might think this is penny pinching. It it takes no effort at all. But you half the cost of your your living because this doesn't just work for cornflakes and coffee. It works for everything everything and if you look at your if you sit and add up the cost of your living if you say how much have I spent this week just keep the receipts pop them on keep the receipts and look how much you spent that week in grocery bills and say it I don't know which country you might be in you might be in Turkey and you might say okay I spend $150 a week in grocery bills you might be in America and say I spent $400 a week in grocery bills you might be in Australia and say you spent $600 a week because it's expensive on grocery bills. $600, $400, okay, let's keep it more simple, $300 a week. What is $300 times 52? Uh, 1,500, what is it? Do the maths for me, Michelle. 300, come on, someone do the maths for me. I've got it here, hang on, hang on. 300. 
Ben's already done it for us. Has he? Just, just do it though. Just. I've done it. You're right, Ben. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> now, if you, if you could save, if you could save seven hundred and fifty. What are we talking? Seven fifty. Seven thousand five hundred. Seven thousand eight hundred dollars a year on your grocery bill. Imagine what you could do with that. $7,500 a year on your grocery bill. You want a car? I, I used to have a friend who used to, who used to smoke and, and drink a lot. And, and he was always complaining he had no money. And I, and I worked out how much he spent on cigarettes and, and booze and said to him, do you know, actually, in, in three years, you could buy that Maserati that you wanted. And he was like, yeah, you're not wrong when you do it. But people just don't want to save that money. So 7500 is a great big chunk towards buying a car, right? It's, it's not... It's not a car, it's certainly a second-hand car, but it's not a car, but three years, it is a car, right? Three years, it's 21,000 uh, plus dollars. Um, it is a car, so... Just like Ben says, even as a business owner, I am the same. I always live my life in a similar way. I won't spend unnecessarily because it doesn't make sense, not because I have a problem with it. Exactly, and and what what we, what we did, we live that way in our life uh, perpetually. It, it, it is not any hardship for us. We don't we don't find it difficult to do. We're, we're very cautious and we're very. We're, it's become like a second nature for us to understand these things. Seven thousand dollars in my pocket is better than in Woolworths' pocket. It's it's just a given, it's right? A it's a bit of a principle. It's, as well, it's, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's just it doesn't matter now. People don't realize just how much things cost as well, you know, they're, they're because we're so used to buying things week by week and it's just, oh, it's just another $20, or it's just another $15. But, you know, you start to add those things up over a year. Now, if you have that principle of living and you take that through everything, say, as we've talked now about the cost of living on the road, the cost of accommodation as you're traveling. If I traveled like my friend that buys the coffee in the service station, the cost of traveling for me would probably be many hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to travel. So effectively, by not living that life, I save many hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in costs, probably even more so. You know, I said the $3,000 for an apartment uh, in, in Sicily and we're paying 750, just work that out. It, it's, it's not necessarily accurate, but it's definitely accurate between 750 uh, dollars Australian for an apartment and fifteen hundred dollars. Now that's only fifteen hundred dollars you've saved, but over a year that is eighteen thousand dollars that you save. You know, it's a lot of money. It doesn't sound like a lot each month, but it's a lot of money. Eighteen thousand dollars in my pocket or in a landlord's pocket. What's the difference? So if you do that now, at eighteen thousand, I've got seven thousand five hundred for my groceries. I've got, you know, it's 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 crazy how much we 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 do now by do, by doing that you can become very you can become very cost effective and you can start to live your life accordingly and that's how michelle and i are able to do what we do with almost little if no effort um you have to get used to you have to hone those those skills a little bit do you understand if you want that freedom if you want the complete freedom to not need to have to cowtail to a boss or a business or a bank, you have to learn to hone those skills. And you will find that in private schools or public schools in the UK, as we call them in the UK, in, in Australia, private schools, public schools, you will find in most of these very high end public schools, that is the way they teach children to handle their money. One of the problem we have in our state school system is that we never we teach in a state school. They teach you how to write checks and how to handle your credit card in private schools. They teach you how to manage your money. And that's why people who often that's that's the difference between the, that's the them and us mentality. You know, if you can learn to live in a way that most people who are very rich, by the way, are very frugal. You'll, you'll see that time and time again, the wealthier they are. I mean, you'll probably find the queen and that never spend a penny on anything. Um, never have done for centuries because that's the way they accumulate wealth. So most people who, who have great wealth are often exceptionally frugal. You'll see that time. I mean, look at um, uh, Scrooge Duck, Scrooge McDuck. I mean, yeah. look at him. <laughs> yeah? As an example, I'm using obviously a, 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 
a, a factual character from for, for reference. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck, my hero. I'm not mean, right? I don't. I, I like good. I like good beer. I don't want. Well, like Rena says, some things are worth the price, taste and quality. We have expensive tastes, okay? I I don't have any laptops. I don't have an eight hundred dollar laptop. I, I would always have a very expensive laptop. I, I almost don't even like to say they're so expensive. We don't have. We don't afford ourselves not to have good quality things, but we know when they're needed and we know when to spend and when not to spend. So does that does that help? Is that interesting? Yeah, put three Zs in a in a line if you've gone to sleep. <laughs> Accumulating wealth and not spending it isn't really your wealth. But, but, That's what but, says. but yes, um, it's it's. You have to, there's a balance, right? Because I've met many people in my life that live miserable lives that have lots of money as well. So you've got to find a balance. There is a, there's a yin and a yang. And we, we, we changed our channel, the second channel we put up to a, a called Stepping Off the Edge. And that's, that's out Michelle's and I's life. It's, a, it's about taking risk and knowing that they'll work out. Our life has always been about taking risks and making them work out because we never, ever, ever consider that a risk is not worth taking. Um, and this is a much bigger subject. I can't really get into it here. Dwayne it? says, I saw a Reader's Digest article once. It talks about people who wound up getting wealthy by watching their finances very carefully. One said his goal was never to be rich. Yes. Um, and Eddie, I have no interest in wealth. And Eddie says, spending within your means. I, I have no interest in wealth, by the way. I, I don't want to be rich or, or particularly wealthy. Um, I, I am, I am um, cautious with what we spend, but I, we're also generous with, what we, with, with where we spend it. You know, I talk to you. I don't do it for show. I don't do it for things, but I, I, I support small shops. I pay more for this place because I think I'm helping the guy that's running the business to, to, to get through a hard time. You know, we're spending more money than we should on this apartment for that reason. And technically we should move and go somewhere cheaper. But I feel like he's just had a baby and I want to support him and make sure that he's okay. Um, can I afford to do it? Not really. Will, will we make it work? Yes, of course we will, because we never don't make things work. It's the way it's, it's the way it is. And um, Michelle and I have this sort of like um, philosophy in life. It's it's pretty simple, really. Is how the hell did we get here? We have no idea <laughs> because we just keep we just keep going forward, and we never give it a lot of consideration. Because if we did, we'd never do anything. If we really started to think about, you know, how can we do this? How can we continue? What will, will we have enough funds to do this? We'd never do anything. Because to be honest, we've often been in positions where we've a lot less money than all of you, almost all of you watching. I know you might think that's not true, but probably a lot less than a great deal of you have ever realised you could survive off of. And we've done things that most people would say I couldn't afford to do. Um, and we make it work. But Paul says, interesting, Steve. That sounds really... Um, <laughs> it's just changing it slightly. Smug. No, sorry, that sounds a bit... I don't want to sound... sound uh, too smug. Go on. So you also talked about downsizing possessions, getting rid of stuff. Any general tips for that? I've been told if you haven't used something in a year, you probably don't need it. Who's that? Paul. Paul Weber. Yeah. Paul. Um, that's a hard one because I am a, I am a, I'm really difficult to get rid of things. <laughs> I, I wanted, I was going to make a video about this. You know, I, I don't know if any of you guys, I don't know if any of the guys are listening, ever collected rocks when they were kids. Um, yeah, go on, go and get it. She's going to go and get it. Michelle's going to gonna go and get it. This will summarise what... A... This is not coming with us. <laughs> yes, it bloody well is. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if any collected interesting stones. My son's all do this as well, they get it from me. You know, you see a beautiful little or shell on the beach, maybe you see a nice shell on the beach. <laughs> and you are gonna laugh in a minute. Eddie says, collecting but, rocks is my life. But <laughs> don't, don't laugh at me, laugh with me, all right? <laughs> so, you know, 
So I'm, I find it very hard, Paul, to get rid of stuff, you know, old pairs of shoes, uh, shirts. I've got the shirt, as you saw in the earlier live stream, I've got the shirt that I started traveling five years ago with and it's starting to fall to pieces and I don't want to get rid of it. And even though I really don't want to wear it anymore on the shows, I do wear it occasionally. Um, I don't want, I almost want to keep it, you know, and I'd like to put it up on, I want it in my man cave up on a, up on a frame sort of thing, you know, that's where my shirt would be. So I find it hard to, to get rid of stuff. Um, now this is going somewhere. So if any of you used to collect, if you collected stones as a kid, so we're walking down the street last week, Michelle and I, and who else in the bloody world would see a lump of coal and this is a lovely bit of anthracite go on get you this will get you jealous boys this is a really beautiful piece of anthracite real not anthracite but it's a beautiful hard piece of coal laying on this on the floor of the street and pick it up and bring it home with you not only pick it up turn around and go back and pick it up <laughs> calm down so this is a this is a piece of coal now they clearly still have this is really heavy, by the way. It's a really solid piece, you know, like the old coal used to be. It's not coke. This is not. This is not your rubbish from your, from out of a charcoal pit for for doing a barbie. This is a proper piece of solid coal. And I picked it up, and Michelle said to me, "Put it back." I said, "No, no, I like this. It's beautiful, beautiful piece of coal." So I bought it back. It, it was a little shiny, and I, I put it on the side, and I don't want to get rid of it. And somehow, you know, she'll she'll try and get me to get rid of it. I mean, but, Eddie said you can always send the rock home to your family so they can hold on to it. I can't even. It's filthy. Connection. Look. So um, it'll probably. Yeah, I thought I'm thinking I'll bring it back. We're going to have a little fire in there. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to have a little fire to keep ourselves warm. I can all these ideas. I want to cut it in half. You know, I want to cut it in half and see how it is in the centre. So that is the sort of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit here. So I like possessions. I, I find it hard. So how do you get rid of stuff, uh, Paul? You have to, you have to toughen up a bit, mate. You have to toughen up. You know, stop being such a big girl's blouse. You have to toughen up. That's what I have to say to myself. And you have to get rid of stuff. You have to lose. You have to. I I am. Uh, I love working with my hands. I've got a lot of beautiful old tools, and I've kept most of them. But I had beautiful bench saws and, and equipment that most guys would never get rid of. And when we started traveling, I got rid of it all. It was very hard to do. We downscaled a lot of stuff. We've done this before, by the way. This isn't the first time in our lives we've done it. So getting rid of stuff is is all about there's a good point you said if you haven't used it for x number of months then you don't need it that doesn't work that is not going to work right yeah, you just so put it i've got tools i've got tools even now that i haven't got rid of that i haven't used for, for 15 years but i you know beautiful old wood planes and things there's no way i'm going to get rid of them so i've got um comics from when i was a small child you know dc comics that are probably quite valuable now i've kept them my whole life so they've still got all the old uh, they were from an american store so they've got the american published price on them some of them i might have paid sort of i don't know 50 cents for and i suspect now they're worth at least a dollar 25 so imagine that can you imagine that michelle they're worth as much as that. yeah i reckon my whole collection of comics is probably worth about a hundred hundred bucks if i'm lucky and um <laughs> and i've dragged those darn things around me all around the world and 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 but they still have a they still i've still got those I've still got a massive collection of vinyl um, from when I was a, a young kid. So you can't get rid of everything, but you can get rid of some of the big stuff. You know, you can get rid of some of the big stuff that, that can be bought again should you need it. Look at, uh, look at what you have. If you want to downsize, look at what you have. If you don't need to downsize, don't do it. That's what I would say. There's no point downsizing what you have in your home as like, unless you're a hoarder and you've got way too much junk in your home. Yes, he says, I should have mentioned the year thing doesn't apply to stuff that has nostalgic value, old photos, etc., or expensive stuff like tools that you may still need. Or T-shirts that are worth 50 pence, old money. You know, you've, you've got to... 
Chris says, what about cooking stuff? Mixers, knives, etc. Oh you know, <laughs> just don't, don't even mention how much cooking. I have got mixers and knives <laughs> and, 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 and cookware and stuff that a huge amount. But I also had a passion for working with timber and woodwork when I was younger, and I used to have a lot of uh, carpentry stuff. So I've got a lot of carpentry gear, a lot of really old vintage planes, beautiful old Japanese chisels, um, lots of beautiful kitchenware, um, and I've still kept it. The only way you can do that, by the way, Paul, is to have a storage locker, which we do have, or um, and, and that's where we keep all our stuff. It's, small. it's only small, it's very small. Um, but it's got all those valuable bits and pieces that, that mean a lot to us. And, and Ben says, I don't think that shirt is worth 50 pence, Steve. I agree with you, Ben. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously they have no va real value. Yeah. That is pure sentimental value, and it actually hasn't <laughs> even really got sentimental value, has it? How much sentimental has a lump of coal got? Uh, ask my mother how many pieces of stone I bought back with me from my trip around Australia from different parts you know from the red rocks up in the up in the northern territories from the sort of um the 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 bits of sort of um glistening stony rocks that I found along the Nullarbor you know Dwayne says I found a petrified log in a field on my dad's farm in Alberta and one of my older sisters found a rock that looked like a piece of used chewing gum Joe yep I, can you relate to that? Yes. I have a, a piece of wood. I have a piece of wood that I found with your dear mother. Yes. Who's passed away now, sadly, and we miss her dearly. But anyway, I, I, that I found on, on a beach um, many years. And it, it's the most <laughs> amazing with, with my... Uh, it's a story. Now, I'm not going to go into it. It's too, uh, it's too personal a story, but it's... Uh, it's anyway, needless to say, I've still got that piece of wood. We do. Yeah. We? Oh, now it's we, is it? Now no, it's her of, wood. The piece of wood. Yes, it's a nice see, piece see, of wood. See. That was, there was this when it's a happened. problem, it's mine. When, <laughs> yeah, she well, li when she likes it, it's we. <laughs> Karen says, after clearing out my mum's house when she died, I, I swore I'd never leave such a task for my children. I'm working on it. Hope you guys start traveling soon. Everybody does that. Everybody sort of says, you know, I don't want to leave a lot of stuff for people to sort of sort through. And um, I think it is quite important not to accumulate too much rubbish. Um, but if you like collecting, do as you wish, you know. Don't let people dictate whether or not you travel or don't travel or get rid of stuff. You know, whatever makes you happy. I mean, if you're in a place where you don't need to get rid of stuff and don't get rid of it do you remember and sometimes you may not know this but sometimes i i i, I talked once before about this i i tried to meditate and and um uh you know the, the, to, to keep you know yourself saying you have to meditate sometimes and get a bit of like uh, uh downtime and it can be very 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 uh beneficial to you if you're able to do a bit of yoga do a bit of meditation and some uh, months ago, does anyone remember that I was going to do a mindful meditation video? Anybody remember that? I wonder if anybody does who's, who's in at the moment. <laughs> Let's just see if anyone does. Just say no if you don't. Because if you do, you might remember where I said it. Yes, Ben said, yes, we said it was a good idea as well. Are you talking about my, my, my video, Ben? No, Mona says no. Dwayne says no. <laughs> Ben says, yes, meditation videos. Okay, Ben, I think, probably does remember it. I Paul think... says no, Chris says no. <laughs> How about if I... If... <laughs> okay, uh, now and again, uh, I, I, I'm quite, I quite like a bit of meditation. Well, Piper just... says she does. Thank you, Piper. You and, you and, and ben, ben says, you asked us if you wanted to see them. And did I let you down, Ben? I certainly did, but I made the video. I just couldn't bring myself to put it up on the channel because it just seems so bizarre. Um, I'll see if I can find it, Ben. And I don't know if any of you would like to see it. It just sort of demonstrates what I sometimes do to unwind and relax. Mona says we were too focused on the food, sorry. <laughs> and Ben says, oh, bloody hell, upload it, Steve, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look. I'll look into it. While we're doing this ses session, I might. I might look into it. It was. It was. Um. It was in Japan, by the way, uh, Ben and.
Piper, was it? Piper, yes. Yeah. It was in Japan when I was in Japan and I was getting very into my meditation at the time. You two and get stars for remembering. <laughs> yeah, you do get full, full stars for remembering. And I, we filmed that video. We filmed the whole thing. I think I possibly even put, mostly edited it. If I put it up now, I'll have to put like a Turkish intro to it because it will make no sense whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, getting, getting your, 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 your head together. I think that's what I'm getting at, Paul. It's kind of getting your head together and understanding what you do need and what you don't need in life. And it's, it's a tricky one. Yeah, Eddie said, meditation is awesome. When I got stuck on homework in college, after 30 minutes of meditation, I was able to power through some work with ease where before I had been stumped. Yeah, a little bit of sort of mindful meditation is really good for you. You know, it's kind of just listening to your breath and, and, ki and kind of, you know, mainly it's listening to your breath, listening to your breathing li and listening to your thoughts and allowing them to come into your mind and, and releasing the, the, the stress. Paul, it Paul really says, does help. Paul it says, really upload is. it. I said no, because I thought you asked if we saw them, not if you wanted <laughs> If you wanted to see them, oh um, look, it might be it might be on one of the many hard drives that I've got. I think I might have it here, so so we'll. we'll ben see. says, "Why did did you not upload it, Steve? We all said yes to the idea." I know, Ben, but the problem is, mate, and I know so you're going to lecture me on this. I know you're going <laughs> to tell me off on this, but it didn't seem relevant. And I, I looked at it and I thought, "Where does this fit into our travelling and our food and what we're doing? Where does me sat in a park in?" Fukuoka, Japan, cross leg meditating and talking about how I relax fit into this greater scheme. And I just sometimes make, I'm only human. I don't always think that everybody wants to see that nonsense, even does... though it means quite a lot to me. It just seemed like it may mean nothing. And it is hard sometimes because, you know, as we started to move into this genre of sort of travel and mixing the food and travel and, and doing what we want to do rather than what everybody... <laughs> in, in, hmm? I said we've got to that point now. Yeah, well, we <laughs> kind of do what we want to do. It can be quite hard because you sometimes put up a video you've enjoyed making and nobody watches it and you think, oh, so I didn't want that hit. But I, I don't... I, I, I care so little now about whether or not... Um, because we love the people that follow us so much it means so little to us whether or not we grow or not at the moment and it would be nice to grow obviously i'm not you know without vanity but um uh i i probably i could do it i'll look and see ben, ben says the court audience would watch it though so it's still a success um wake your stand says yes please upload it we always like to see different techniques of meditation and rich pearson says i would never I could never calm my mind to the point where meditation would work. My mind is always racing. My mind, the Michelle is pointing at me. <laughs> she is pointing at me now. Who said that? Rich Pearson. She, you have another one here. She's pointing at me. Rich. Yes. One of the, the things you may uh, relate to and what I, uh, some of you may not relate to, uh, I don't know, is I've got one of those heads that, that is screaming inside. It never shuts up and it's quite frustrating. Um, because I, 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 I multi-think all the time. My brain almost never, it's noisy up there. It's very noisy. And so for me, actually, meditation and mindfulness has been the most helpful thing that I've ever done to try and calm the chaos that goes on up inside there. Imagine, like, fairgrounds and uh, uh, you hear me talk, right? And how I talk, there's. I can think of a thousand things while I while I speak of ten things. It's 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 just like a race course up there. So I know how you feel, and there's a lot of you out there may relate to that. Ben says yes, I'm the same. Steve, it's annoying, yeah. but we have to listen. It is. It's 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 tra it's traffic. My my daughter is the same. Yes, she has the same uh, things. Michelle's not like that. She's much calmer. She <laughs> Michelle Michelle seems to have a, a single sort of steady beautiful galloping cantering probably mind of sort of simplicity whereas mine's more like sort of the 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 end of a game of kaplunk you know where all the marbles drop through that's that's my mind it's just too busy it's too busy so actually mindfulness is a, is a very useful tool and and um ben says by the way for others meditation does not just include sitting and closing your eyes something that might help you rich is walking in national park or outside somewhere in nature because that is also a form of meditation that is walking meditation is very yeah, good and i walk a hell of a lot but the problem is it does actually it doesn't uh, my brain doesn't stop when i'm walking so it's pretty active there 
but you can do walking meditation. A lot of people do walking meditation. Mindfulness is really interesting. If you, if none of you have ever done mindfulness before, it's a kind of, it's kind of allowing the busy brain to to work and releasing your thoughts. Can I talk about this? Is this interesting enough to talk about? So it's it's sort of being mindful of yourself, understanding. Firstly, you're talking about listening to your breathing, understanding the way your thoughts and the troubles that come into your mind go, concentrating them and letting them go, not trying to stop that stuff from coming into your mind. It's actually allowing it in, allowing it out, and it slows down the rate at which you, you think until you get to a calm state. And it's very, 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 very good for you. So, Rich, if I have your cooking, you die of a type. <laughs> yeah, and, and cooking is, is going to be a big part of the future of what we do. Uh, Michelle and I eventually will get stopped and we will start to teach a lot of what we've learned on this journey. But we're not rushing it. I'm sorry, you have to be patient. If it, it you know, maybe it might it could be a year it could be five years i can't say because we're on a we're on a journey at the moment that 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 that, that is what it is and you'll see it if you stay with us you'll see it unfold and you'll see what 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 happens um Dwayne says we need to alone time without distractions yes um then Ben says um, yes. everybody has different needs as well, Dwayne. It's uh, like everybody has, and it's kind of understanding what the needs are and understanding what you need, and and getting more comfortable with with yourself. Uh, there's a beautiful saying today, my buddy here in. Uh, oh no, I'll save it for the lives. I'll save it for the. If I tell you everything, you won't watch, you won't watch the video watch tomorrow. tomorrow. I know you'll watch it anyway. But there's a lovely saying here about balconies. So just mm -hmm. look look out for that. So Ben says, uh, try, uh, yes, because trying to stop it doesn't really help. That's why some people struggle to meditate. And Rich, who originally said about it, it says, um, mine is like an American freeway. <laughs> yeah, busy. Busy yes. but organised. It's, it's pretty organised. I see things. This is why I find lumps of coal on the street that nobody else bothers to notice, because I see things. Um, I, I used to have to quiet, quieten the mind because I see cracks in pavements that nobody ever notices. And, and, and I... I, I think I have a partly sort of a sort of photographic mind, but it works on a really crappy camera. <laughs> so Rich says the only place I can get some sort of calmness is walking through a big woods where I hear nothing but nature that helps, but it's still noisier. Yeah, yeah. There's, we'll talk about that. I'll, I'll, I'll look at the mindfulness. I'll, I'll look at look out the video, and I'll do it within the next. Wayne says exactly. Time. Each person is different. Unless I have a unless it's a big edit. And uh, Piper says, uh, I've been a sub viewer for years. I'm not going anywhere long. <laughs> I'll frighten you off eventually, Piper. I'll do something to scare you all off. I eventually do. I'm sure I eventually scare everybody off. You know. We just got to the point where we just do things that we enjoy. I to you know when I made the, when I, because I used to, 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 I butchered my own animals, pigs, uh, sheep, fowl of all sorts. And I'm very comfortable with meat preparation of all sorts. And when I had to do my meat series, you can tell, Michelle, it took me, Michelle it will, will testify, it took me <laughs> years. months, years even, to, to, to get to the point where I was comfortable sharing with the viewers because I know how touchy people get and how, how sensitive people get. When I took the pig's head and I, I, I brought it onto my show because I wanted to show how to make brawn, or Guan Charlie, I'm always very conscious that a lot of people may. You see, what time is it? Can you hear that? Half past one. And he's got to beep his horn. It's no point. Half past one. It's essential that he delivers his pizza to the person next door. At half past one. Revs his engine and beeps his horn. So yeah, when I made the Guan Charlie video, you see what I mean. The brain never stops, but it stays on cue. Um, uh, the Guan Charlie. Uh, and and that I knew a lot of people would be upset and it took me hard to, it was hard for me to do but it is what I'm passionate about I'm passionate about that sort of food so so I think of more and more I think I'm getting bitten um <laughs> maybe put the fan on and, and I'll just close that because okay. excuse me guys I think we might be getting a little midges coming in so my legs are getting bitten um so it did take me a, a while to um to put those videos up as well but I still, I'm very proud of the 
the sausage making videos, the meat making videos, uh, they're, 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 they're things I'm, I'm passionate about. I'm just closing the other window. <laughs> so uh, Petri says we're here for the long haul. Okay. And Piper says no way we use here. <laughs> Thank you, Piper. Mona says the inner monologue tends to quieten when cooking or eating is relaxing. Yeah, and I'm very. I'm not. Uh, it's not a problem. Um, it, it's it's not a problem. You know, it's not a problem. But it could help maybe others to know how I deal with that maybe um, and it is all about sort of you know calming the calming yourself and I don't want to get all too guru-y guru -y and too sort of spiritual on, on people but I'll, I'll do it you've spurred me on again Ben yes and, and that's why time, you should upload it yes I was. got it I understand you get that mosquito no, Michelle? I missed it is it full of my blood no I missed it uh. <laughs> so that I can confirm there are mosquitoes in Istanbul It'll be cheesy, but who cares? It will be cheesy, but it'll be all right. It's quite long. That's one of the other reasons. It's like it's like forty-five minutes long because it's a it's a thirty-minute meditation session, and I've 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 um, I've sampled all sorts of uh, uh, anyway. I'll. Eddie says cheese is good though. Yeah, cheese. It's yeah. my first full cheese video. Rich has a quaint little waterfall in the woods, quite relaxing. Yes, or the breaking of, uh, of, of, of um, waves on, uh, on the beach. So Ben says, I mean, is... that's why I liked your bike ride from Indonesia, for similar reason, reasons. It was really relaxing to watch. Yes. That was a long one. That was a long one, yes. Many years ago, actually my first ever YouTube video was a bike ride... Yes. Was a bike ride video. It was. That was Many a years ago. I don't know if it's. Ride, not a yeah. That would be a hard one to find, guys. And I don't. Ben said it was like 25 minutes, wasn't long enough. Um, no, and I think that video is still up there somewhere. It's. Oh, uh, the yes, the bicycle riders. Yes, but, a, but a, a mountain bike ride. I was a lot younger. That was quite a few years ago. Yeah, that was when the early, early days, I was probably editing that on some bizarre piece of software that doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, is there any other questions anybody would like to ask? Because I'm probably going to start to wrap up. We're getting to the sort of two hour mark. I probably should. Two hours. But Ben means the Indonesian bike ride, not the old one. Yes, we know Ben. Yeah, I know which one you mean, Ben. But I'm just <laughs> you just reminded me in my busy brain that... That, that the bike ride you like that I did the first video I possibly ever did was a video it had a soundtrack of Mungo Jerry in the summertime and it got flagged by YouTube almost immediately <laughs> as not appropriate I think the two songs was the, uh, the, the I guess I guess the Lord must live in New York City it was a tune by Harry Nilsson and uh, Mungo Jerry's in the summertime there were tracks that I used and I put it up onto YouTube back in the sort of many the early part of YouTube um, when nobody really knew that YouTube was ever going to be anything and uh, it got flagged even back then I would say probably 15 years ago has YouTube been around that long the very almost the first year I forgot I'd actually done a video it was when we were still just thinking YouTube was somewhere we could Pop up a family well, video probably, and share you, it with a fan with you a friend. Made it even before YouTube was around. Then you was probably uh, it up. Yes, no, but it was it was a long time ago, I think. Anyway, so yes, you do always have to be careful you, about music. You do have to. That was before anyone even uh, realised such a thing. Anyway, so any questions before we decide to uh, hit the hay? because it's half past one but there's a curfew you know there's nothing to yeah, do we're now. not in a rush i mean you can we can stay on a bit longer <laughs> but i think you, you some of you might be dwindling a bit and that, i don't know if my voice will uh will, will stay up to it unless you get me talking about some other nonsense in which case the problem is a lot of people will look at these longer videos um post um live stream and and just think they're too long to watch which they probably are Okay, Eddie's got a question for you. Totally random, but have you ever seen a volcanic eruption in person? Um, Eddie, that's a very easy one for me to answer. No, 
I've only ever seen them um, on your sort of National Geographic. Um, well, no, I tell a lie, Eddie. I have seen volcanic activity uh, in New Zealand. Oh, yes. But this is just like in Rotorua uh, and Surface of the Moon in New Zealand. There's an area, a, a, a place called Surface of the Moon, the Rotorua, and you'll see the sulfurous gaseous air is coming out of the ground in bubbling mud. So it's like, it's just like big um, globules of mud that burst from the ground. So that is actually volcanic activity, but there is no lava, no molten lava there. It's just, it's just a really, it's like stinky eggs. It's like the most foul smelling city in the world, Rotorua. You do get used to it. But it's mud pots. He says that counts. Yeah, it counts. So I have, and we've been to uh, the surface of the moon in in New, in New Zealand, also in the in the North Island, and um, the, but I've never seen lava, never seen sort of glowing red hot moving rock, and, and I know there are places where we could see that, and it'll happen one day. Ben says the problem is we can't even ask you where you're going next because you don't know. No. Actually, do you plan to visit any places where there are national parks, etc.? I wish more genuine YouTubers would create content that shows various national parks around the world. Who, who said that? Yes, Ben. Um, I don't know, mate. I'm sorry. I, I really don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's it's possible. I, I mean, if we do the Camino, it's not national parks. Isn't it? Because Some of the Camino think, Trail is National Park. I think you're going to like the, the Camino Trail. We want to, uh, to show it as, as it is. Um, it's it's going to be very <laughs> beautiful, solitude. Well, it will be if we go this year anyway. There's no one else doing it. So, Wook Lassan says, thinking of raising animals on my property, but I have one problem. I don't know if I can prepare myself to butcher them. Um, you tell your story of your chicken. The, fir <laughs> the first chicken I ever killed... Um, and the problem is we did name our animals, but the first chicken I ever had to kill for the family was a very long, it took me quite a few hours to build up the, the build up the, the strength, I wouldn't even call it strength, the resolve to actually um, kill an animal. But we'd chosen to live a certain lifestyle and we chose to actually raise our animals in a very comfortable way so they had very good lives <coughs> and the principle <coughs> the principle oh michelle you got me some water i'm going <laughs> i'm not going to have another beer guys because it won't do me any good um why am i still eating nuts if i can barely well, talk just a little bit just a little bit these these um pistachio nuts they have that little husk all over them and if you breathe in so when i first had to kill my first chicken i remember it very well i'd been on the internet i'd researched no i hadn't even been on the internet i was re i'd read a lot of books about how to dispatch a chicken and the one of the methods was to use a broomstick now i'm not going to explain it to you but it's not the best method in the world the other method is to sort of chop its head off with an axe and and and, and i've done pretty much every method you can think of because over the years we butchered many many hundreds of chickens and, and i became very very good at doing it in the most humane manner but the first one was a bit messy i don't think i'll tell that story today <laughs> it's it's not a good one to go to bed on well, but it was it know. was it was very hard for me to do it's a uh, so you were saying if you wanted to keep i find it if you want to be self-sufficient if you want to to know the meat you eat has been raised very humanely and very carefully you need to get comfortable with that um or not eat meat i mean it is an option for you you know um but it is it is hard i'm not going to pretend it isn't the hardest thing but it does get easier um and you do learn um to uh, respect the food you know in very much respect the food that stays me even to today i find it very hard to waste the smallest amount of, of of 
food, whether it be a grown vegetable or a, um, a piece of meat. Because, you know, I often argue with people who say, uh, you know, who are the, the, the vegan mentality is to sort of assume that nothing other than animals has a living, a living being, you know. And, and I sort of, when you put so much effort into growing a cauliflower, and you know how much work goes into it, you respect that cauliflower, you do not cut off the leaves and throw them away you know you use the cauliflower leaves you don't cut the heart out and chuck it in the bin you just don't do that you know if you've if you've grown brussels sprouts you don't take the whole stem and just chuck it in the bin if you if there's any parts that are too woody to use you compost them you know uh, so it's a very good thing to do if you can do it do it if you if you can't don't and Rich says, uh, being live is even better, you get proper response right away. I'd still like to know if you have any ancient roads that you could ride along. Ancient roads that I could ride along? Yeah, but a little bit earlier it says, any Roman roads, old roads that go through the countryside that nobody uses anymore, like a cow path. Where? I don't know. Rich, you'll have to be a bit clearer, I'm not sure where. Here, in, in I don't know, in, in Turkey, there is a... Um, a there is a walk here, a famous walk, and we've really considered doing it. Um, it's called the Lycian Lycian Way here. So I don't know if this is answering. If you need more information, please say. There is um, a walk here in Turkey, which is an ancient trading walk. It's called the Lycian Way or the Lycian Way. And it's a little bit like the Camino Way. It's not as long, but it's a coastal walk. It's very, quite, it can be quite hard because the paths are not as well laid out. And that is a, a very popular walking route uh, here. And it's quite interesting. All right. Michelle and I would like to do a lot more of these walks that we haven't done yet. <laughs> I'm not going to start preaching about walks until I've done a good one, you know. <laughs> what is that Paul saying? <laughs> Can you give Kurt a doggy treat on me? I'm sure he, I mean, she will enjoy it. I love dogs. <laughs> I will, Paul. Yes, I will. I will get Kurt because she, she is she is gorgeous. She's such a lovely character. And today, Paul, because you've done that, I will go out and spend at least that, if not more, and get some treats because I love doing that anyway. I've always got doggy treats with me. You will behave and you'll get it Monday. I will wait until the curfew. <laughs> I'll probably get some nice chews or something, will. and I will take it. I almost it? always buy doggy treats. Um, now the thing is, I've got some doggy biscuits here, but because Kurt gets fed so well, she looks at my dog biscuits and sort of sniffs at them and turns away. I'll get something that that I know she'll like. How tasty! Maybe even some cheese. Oh yeah, she dogs like love that. cheese. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but today when we were walking. Uh, on the video that's going up tomorrow, we met her doppelganger, <laughs> like a um, almost Kurt's twin sister in the city. So because you've said that, I'm also going to get something for her. <laughs> Thank you. Rina says, I've been making dough while listening. I find bread making very relaxing and rewarding. Bread making is really relaxing and re rewarding. Cooking, generally, I find very meditative. Um, I'm very, I'm going to blow my own trumpet, Michelle, but I, I'm very good in the kitchen. I, I, yes, I'm really, I'm really, uh, uh, I'm really comfortable in the kitchen I'll give you that and you are. I tidy as I go. So I rarely leave a mess behind me. Okay. Um, so I enjoy being very methodical and I love working with breads. I love working with almost anything. And that's, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. It's a, it's a very, I can zone out completely in the kitchen. That's why it's quite hard sometimes to do the cooking shows because some things that I, I love making, when you make them in a video, it's a lot harder because there's a lot less zoning out. A lot more, um, <coughs> a lot more uh, thought has to go. It's you know, when I, when I made uh, the, gin, the gingerbread house, I always remember when we made the gingerbread house for the Christmas videos a few years back, quite a few years back now, and my son was in it as well, and we time-lapsed the making of the gingerbread house for Christmas. We've always done those sort of projects, making gingerbread houses, and they are the simplest and most enjoyable things to do. 
until you film them. And when you film them, you could throw that gingerbread house across the room. You not, you know, it doesn't get, but it took hours and days and weeks to film that one episode, the three part series where I actually made the, the, the template for the gingerbread house and made the gingerbread house. It's just filming it makes it a lot harder. So uh, same with bread actually. I love, love, love bread making. I'm not such a fan of filming bread making <laughs> because it takes a lot more effort and it does take a bit of the pleasure out of it. But I love the fact that when I share it, it brings so much pleasure to people and it can help people have the pleasure I get in bread making, if you know what I mean. But not filming bread making, that's hard work. Eddie says, any plans to do state or national park tour of the USA? Um, we've done quite a few post, uh, pre-YouTube. We've been through the Yellowstone National Park. We've been through a number of different national parks. We've driven through Denver and over the the pass into many beautiful national parks. But um, I, I I don't know. Uh, the the simple answer to that at the moment is we, as I've said to people many times before, Michelle and I don't plan that far ahead. Uh, you might say something to me now that completely changes our future plans. It's very possible with that we're that flexible. Michael Costa says, um, oh, nice goatee, miss your traveling, hope you guys get moving soon. Thank you. This goatee could well disappear over there. I mean, it's getting to that stage where it's, it can be a little bit, I'm not a bit, I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to growing any facial hair, when it starts to itch. Man, I could. What I've been doing, because nobody gave me any tips, is I find putting some hand cream onto your skin when you're growing a beard, if you've got hand cream, you know, any cream, face cream, body cream, any cream, they're all the same basically, aren't they? They're all Vaseline with a bit of, I don't know, eucalypt oil in them. Um, onto your, your beard and round your skin stops the itching very, very quickly. It doesn't last for a long time, but it lasts long enough to, to shut it up. <laughs> but Chris Garton says, interested in hearing more about your farm time. Maybe we'll have to do a live stream of that. Um, that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, that, that comes out. If you watch if you watch me over time, you'll hear me talking about that on and off. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it's a small farm. It's like a hobby farm, like a little, you know, a little... Uh, we weren't farmers. I wasn't certainly farmer jar. I was growing sort of acres of crops. Yeah, we, we were in a farming area, weren't we? We, we lived <laughs> in a farmhouse and we had a... a, a, a a couple of acres or so of land and we grew vegetables and we kept animals and we lived like a couple of country bumpkins to be honest we we, we were very 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 happy and yeah. to be honest if, if it hadn't been for the fact that we needed to get our children their final education completed in, Aus in Australia there's a good chance we'd still be there <clears throat> Chris says, much harder to grow veg than raising chickens, in my opinion. Pests are always a big issue. Um, um, yeah, the veggies. W much harder to what? Much harder to grow veg than raising chickens. Pests are always a big issue. Yeah, pe pests are a big issue. Um, some veg is really easy to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's super easy to grow. I mean, just just put some radishes into this into a, a shallow um, tilled piece of ground, and watch how quickly a, a radish will grow. Watch how quickly cress will grow. Um, watch how quickly radicchio or, or some of the simple lettuce will grow. Um, <clears throat> some some things are almost impossible not to grow. Pests are an issue, but there are ways of getting around that. Dwayne said that I was originally from a 780-acre farm. My late mother's cousin has 5,000 acres of farmland. Man, those big farms, amazing. Yeah. Uh, you've got to admire people that run those big farms. It's not for me. <clears throat> I could never have that much commitment in, in one field. So Rich Pearson said I was five. 
and made to watch my pet rooster get dispatched for dinner. I couldn't eat him. It took a few years before I could eat chicken. <laughs> well, look, um, my daughter wanted to. She's always been a, a great lover of rabbits. And she said when we had our, our farm, she said I want to. she'd always wanted bunny rabbits. You know, bunny. You've got to put the word bunny in front of it to make it sound cute. And we said to her, well, we can have rabbits, but they will be for the pot. And she was quite, she was quite good with that. She was actually very comfortable. So I think it's the way we bring up our kids also to have that sort of understanding of where food comes from. It can make it a lot easier. The, 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 don't let them watch Bambi as, as children. <laughs> Mr. Old Clunker says, I find it hard to be away from home during a lockdown. I'd find it hard to be away from home during a lockdown. Good day, Mr. Old Clunker. Lovely to have you back, man. I haven't seen you. I, I saw you comment the other day, and it was good to have you back. Uh, I'm sure you've been around, but... Um, Piper says, my dogs and this, cats... Hang on. Sorry, sorry. This is our home. Yes. Travelling is our home. So we're not away from our home. This is what we, this is what we do. So it's okay for us. We're, we're comfortable with it. Piper Sometimes. says, my dogs and cats have all loved cheese. Cheese. We're talking about giving them cheese. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think because um, Kurt has quite a varied diet anyway. And when I take down some um, pedigree, there's that mosquito. When, when, when I take down some good quality biscuits and put them down, she just looks at them and then walks off. <laughs> um, so I, she's, I, I, well she's, she's going gonna, to gonna have to be something, a treat, Paul, isn't it? It's going to be a, like a treat. And, and dogs do love. Sometimes I might get some of those dentine sticks for her, or I might get um, some some nice cheese or something that, that I know that, that she's going to lap up. And Rena says your bread series from Sicily, especially the sourdough starter, my pandemic start point to finally try. I can't thank you enough for those quick and simple videos of what many yummy loaves. Thank you, and we had such a good. We were so inspired in Sicily because I I'm, I love bread making anyway. And you know, being around that culture of bread making really inspired us to do uh, the series that we did there. And uh, it was we had some we made some great bread there. Dwayne says one of my older sisters was talking to one of my cousins once when they were kids. My cousin said milk comes from the store. My sister said that milk comes from a cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we it's it's important to educate youngsters. You know, there's yeah, there's so much of this going on at the moment. I don't know. I don't know where, I feel like you can't change the world sometimes, it seems so hard. If we could do a little bit, if we can teach just the smallest number of people to understand where food comes from and value food, uh, even if you can only teach two children to do that, it's, it's better than doing nothing. Look, we're going on a bit long, I'm going to wrap up, I think, I, I I love chatting with you guys, but we, we, we don't want to spoil a good thing and, and we can do this again now. I've got my data back. Um, we'll, we'll do it again n next week sometime, uh, if not before. So, love to you all. Vlog going up tomorrow. Vlog going up tomorrow. Uh, today's vlog. <coughs> Still haven't finished it, but it'll, it'll be done. All right, be good. Share the love. If you get chance, share these out. Yes. I know I'm, I say we don't <laughs> care about the views, but it's always nice to have a few extra views. Take care. Love to you all. <coughs> My oh, voice is going. Voice. <laughs> Be good. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.